And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Red Podcast, man. We got something a little different for you guys. We got Nico Letter to the house, man. Yes, boy. <laughs> it. It's a collab you guys did not see coming. Let's get into it. Right, and we are back. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. I'm going to keep this one nice and simple. Rumble.com slash Fresh Fit. Go check us out over there. All the behind the scenes content that you're not going to get anywhere else and all the stuff that pretty much will get us banned. But without further ado, we got Nico Leonard in the house, man. Yo, I know who you are. I watch your content. I'm really psyched for this interview. This is a collab you guys did not know was going to happen. This is a surprise. Can you please introduce yourself to the people who, for those who may not know? My name is Nico Leonard. I am known as one of the craziest guys uh, in the watch world. I'm a watch dealer. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about watches. Watches normally are very boring, and this is what I try to make exciting again, because actually watches aren't boring. Watches are unbelievable, and that's what I try, try to share with the world. Bam. Now, you got a unique accent. Can you tell the people where you're actually from, where you grew up? I'm born and raised in Amsterdam. Like, I'm a, I'm a Dutch guy, but people yeah. don't know. I'm an undercover Irishman. Like, <laughs> I, I, what the fuck? I'm an adopted... I'm, people say back home, I'm an yeah. adopted Ulster man, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm not born and raised in Ireland, but uh, on the island of Ireland, but I've lived there most of my life and very, very proud and very, very grateful uh, that I live in, uh, live in Belfast, Northern Ireland. So. Yeah. I'll say, say this: you're, you're you're Irish as hell, man. Because as soon as I was like, I was like, oh yeah. So what do you think about this? Oh yeah, that's good. You're like, hi, yeah, hi. Uh, Instead hi. of saying yeah, and I was just like, oh, he's definitely Irish, man. Uh, no, listen, <laughs> I, li I, li I lived there most of my life, and um, that country has given me everything I have today, bro. So I uh, like, I'm very, very proud where I live, uh, where I'm from, and and for me, I uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So um, you weren't always a huge YouTuber, no. you know, watch expert, no. watch connoisseur. Um, so you proclaimed. came from humble beginnings. Can you tell the people a little bit about your background, uh, what it was like growing up for you? I uh, self-proclaimed watch expert. There you go. <laughs> Even better. How about that? <laughs> Certified. I actually saw this recently, right? Yeah. Someone was sending uh, like me a, a brief about themselves, and it was about an auction. And there was this certified watch expert. And I was like, how the fuck can you get certified for being a watch expert? <laughs> Where do you do that? Let me know, bro. <laughs> Tried to find it, didn't, couldn't find nothing. So someone proclaimed themselves as a certified watch You're expert. You're the, probably the only uh, watch professional that refers to watches that you don't like as shite. Yeah, it's fucking shit, bro. It's fucking shit. This is fucking dog shit. I have certain watches, right? Yeah. If you wear a hublot, you need to have a really good look at yourself in the mirror right now and and, and ask for forgiveness because you're an embarrassment. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> so um, did you go to college or? No, mate. I um, The humble beginnings, right? I was never really good at anything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really concentrate at school. Where I am, what I was good with, with was with my hands and fixing movements and taking watches apart or photo cameras apart. That's the shit I loved when I was a kid. Also football, right? What we call in Europe football, not that bollocks, American bollocks stuff, <laughs> right? This is proper European stuff. You mean right? soccer? Football. <laughs> sure. Right? So that, that, that was the shit. I was only, basically my whole youth was football. Uh -huh. Yeah, football and, and watches. And, yeah. and I, um, like I said, I couldn't really concentrate at school. I was smart. Like, I mean, I speak several languages. I didn't really have a problem. How many, how many languages do you speak? Uh, four. Yes, English? Four fluent. Dutch? English, Dutch, German. No, I don't really. No, I speak a bit of Spanish. Okay. So, but I would say. Poquito. Uh, what? Poquito, Poquito, yeah. Poquito. A little bit. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, a little bit, right? But mm -hmm. no, three, three. Actually, Flemish, but Flemish is more a dialect in South Afri Af Afrikaans. Yeah, I would speak Afrikaans, but that I wouldn't be able to class that really as a language. Okay. To be honest, that's more a dialect of a more than the average American. So you're winning there. 
yes. <laughs> to be fair, I was in Miami. I'm, I'm, I'm in Miami a lot, man. Yeah. I love Florida. I literally came on Uber drivers that didn't speak a word English. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I he, it was funny. It was funny. So, um, so what, before YouTube, um, what, what kind of jobs did you work? Like what? So before YouTube and before the watch game, because me fixing watches to selling the most expensive watches in the world, I mean, <laughs> there's a big gap in between, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, because I didn't finish uni or, or college or anything like that, I just ended up in dead end sales jobs. And listen, I always worked hard. I always had the fucking mindset and the attitude. I just didn't like school. I didn't like authority. I just didn't fit in the fucking system, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I'm not the guy that fits in a system, so I had to create my own system. Yeah. This is what I've done. But uh, above anything else, there, I never thought it would be reality for me to, to wear a Rolex or whatever. And uh, so I never really, never, near, never really pursued that as a proper career move. Mm -hmm. So I moved. I had dead end sales job, job restaurants. How old are you now? Thirty five. Thirty five. So you're two years older than me. You were born in eighty eight. Seven. Eighty seven. Yeah. You were okay. born in nineteen ninety. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So we're we're both very close in age. Yeah. So you um. So take us through it. So you, you worked a bunch of dead end sales jobs. This is what year now? This is probably what in so mid 2000s or I something? I played football. I played football um, and I got injured when I was 18. Got in some dead end sales job at the age of 21. So 21 to 25, right? That's where I really was doing shit jobs, etc. But li listen, I didn't, I didn't need much either, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a difference there. You don't need much. So I wasn't really ambitious either. Um, I moved, I moved at the, say, the age of 22, 23. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know what that, but I moved and I moved to Ireland to play football and to work in a call center. Gotcha. And, that, and how long did you do that for? I was fired from the first one in three weeks. Wow. Second one took me, took them six months to fire me. And Were you telling the customers they're shite? No, I, you know what my problem is? And I said this earlier, right? <laughs> I can't deal with authority, right? <laughs> Definitely when the reason they have authority is not that they're smarter or better, yeah. but it's because they're older or they're, they're, they like someone above likes them, right? Yeah. That's the problem. So I, I never really dealt with authority well, if you know what I mean. Fair enough. So, so you leave, uh, so you get fired three weeks in. How old are you at this point? So 23, 23, 20, 23, 20, yeah, 23. I joined Vodafone, which is a telecom company in Europe. A big, I don't know if you have that in America, no? No. V no. Vodafone? Vodafone. I've heard of it. I don't know if it's in the US. It's a red, it's red. It's like I uh, joined them. Maybe. Um, it's the only job I've never been fired from, by the way. Fantastic. That is quite good. Hey. Like, like, uh, and, uh, like uh, genuinely... Um, great time there I spent three years of th three years of my life there mm -hmm. and that was really the moment where i started where i wanted to get my shit together mm -hmm. so, um, so at 23 you woke up so i'm just i'm just fucked up confused here to be honest it's like you know what the problem is mm -hmm. i was i moved country sorry my fault i moved country when i was 25 mm -hmm. right i you left ireland I, I went to ireland when i was 25 no 24 was before my 25th birthday. So it was 24. I had a shitty job for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Shitty job. That year I got fired twice. Then I moved to Vodafone. I quit Vodafone at the age of 28. Okay. That's when I started my business. Boom. Done. And, uh, and then that business, what was it specifically? Like, what were you? <sighs> Basically, I was very unhappy in my job at Vodafone, right? Although I really had a good time. At a certain point, there was no further growth for me. Yeah. And I had some problems with people on the team. Whatever. Long story short, um, it was just that relationship was just over. So you uh, left at 28. What year is this now? 2017. This is, yeah. 20. Because I started my business on the 1st of September, 2017. Okay. That moment changed my life, bro. September 2017. Okay, so you started your business September of 2017, and what was the name of the business? Uh, at the time, watchni.co.uk. Okay. Watch Northern Ireland. Yes, I had no inspiration. I'm not a marketing genius, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so I started an Instagram account. I have the photo here still. Mm. And that same Instagram account is now Pride and Pinion, has hundreds of thousands of followers. And, like, I mean, it's, diff it's completely different. What's the name of it? Pride, pride and Pinion now. Pride and, pr so, pride and Pinion. Pride and Pringin. 
Pinion. Pinion. See, the accent is strong. P-I-N-I-O-N. And I'll link it below for y'all as well. I'll put all of his socials below so you guys can go check it out. Let me show you this. This is my first Instagram, bro. So you started your business, right, Um, with watches. What made made you fall in love with watches? When did you get that watch bug? I really young age, right? Age of 13, 14. Oh, wow. So that, that was already there, but it wasn't normal for me. Like, I don't come from a background where money was fucking normal. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, what the fuck do I know? Uh, I've never had money in my pocket. My parents worked their ass off their entire entire life. My mom was a nurse. You know how badly paid fucking medical staff are, definitely in, in, in Europe. And then my father hustled his way and has a, had his own small camera, photo camera shop, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, I, I come from a very hardworking family, but... Like for me, Rolexes and stuff like that—that that wasn't normal. Wasn't that attainable. Standard, yeah. right? So you were you were looking at like high-end watches, and you were like, "I want to get one of these one day." Yeah. So at the age of thirteen, I remember this. I, <laughs> why the fuck do I remember this? <laughs> in Mallorca, as an island in the coast of, of Spain, right? It's it's it's, it's Spain. I'm I. I I remember this is the bluesy, right? This is the bluesy yeah. reference number one six six one three LB. That watch I saw on someone's wrist. What watch is that one? This is Submariner. So it's a Submariner. Okay. Bluesy. bluesy. The, you know, we'll put that on out. screen since it's pre. This is pre-recorded. Hopefully, we could get this on screen. Uh, get this on screen now, yeah. but so that watch got me in this obsession I have today because uh, I didn't know what that watch was. I saw it on someone's wrist, and I was like, "That is fucking the most beautiful thing in the world," right? What does one of those go for now? Like this was a pre-ceramic, pre-ceramic, right? So yeah. you can buy them at seven, eight K probably. Okay. Right. But I bought my son who was born four months ago, the newer version of that. Mm. That's his first watch. Mm. So nice. my, it's somewhere in this house and I would love to show you, <laughs> but I'm stuck here on a chair and I don't, I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't find it, but yeah, it's all good. I'll show this later on. I'll ask my missus to get it. Okay. But honestly, like that was my life. Right. So, I was just fixing watches and shitty watches. And that's how I tried to make a few quid, but I never thought it would be possible to make a career out of it Mm. until I was at a certain point in life where you're in a dead end job again, Vodafone, where it's like, I need to change my fucking life. Right. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's not going to end well. Let me put it that way. You start the business in September, 2017. When did the YouTube channel get made? I used an old account, and I still regret this, right? Oh. I used an older account, which was registered in 2019. Okay. But effectively, we started at the end of 2020. Gotcha. Okay. So it was like, so you had a YouTube channel from before? No, I just had a YouTube account. Okay. So I was never on YouTube. Yeah. So you, you all right. So, but you never posted on it. So you no. like, so looking back in hindsight, you would have started a new account and yes. started with a fresh algo. Because now I have a really annoying uh, uh, Gmail account that I still need to keep alive because of it. Yeah. Because now the consequences and the fear to change that Gmail account. Yeah. To lose my fucking YouTube account with over yeah. a million subscribers. That, that, yeah, that, that, would, that would hurt. Yeah, that yeah, would hurt. Yeah, it's the same here with me. It's just like, yeah, it's on some bullshit account, which is ridiculous. So if you're ever going to do YouTube, start fresh, right? Because you never know if you're going to make a million subscribers. It's easily possible. Even look at me. I, I got it done. I'm not really 1. known. 1.25 now. 1.25. I'm not really known to have a talent, and I, I'm doing successful now. That's average on YouTube. Usually people without a talent do, do well on YouTube. There's an exception, right? There's exceptions. There's to a the bunch of talentless people, uh, yeah, but including us. Yeah, including us. <laughs> <laughs> I see what I mean. But uh, so make sure whenever, uh, this is my tip, golden tip, uh, whenever you start a YouTube channel, get a fresh account, new email address, an email address that you can use for the next 20 years. Bam. So, so, you, so you always were in love with watches. Yes. When did you actually get your first Rolex? My first Rolex officially when I was 19, uh-huh. but I had to sell it after, after two months because I needed to get money. Wow. I got my first credit card at the age of 19. I uh-huh. bought that on a credit card. What was the watch? Uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Like what 34. I got right here. Yeah, which you called shite. No, (laughs) I needed to rank the Rolex collection. (laughs) For some of you guys that are wondering, you made a video, which I I think is actually hilarious. Um, The the Rolex watches, you know, tier list. And um, some of them were, you had a, what was it? It was like God God tier, um, class, class, would buy, would buy, 
Meh, shite. And then shite. And then this one was definitely in the shite category. Listen, if people didn't pay 20 grand premium for that watch, it wouldn't have been shite, right? Fact. <laughs> yeah, I, after I saw that video, I was like, damn, man, like this hurts. Put in the shite category. Because he's the, only been saying this three times during this, the, during him being in my house. Yeah, me. I was just it's like, really God damn like, it, man. It, it hurts my feelings. Cause, yo, I bought the watch, right? So, like, I, I saw the watch. I was like, yo, this thing is nice. I like the red. It's, uh, they don't make it anymore. It's only for one year. I saw LeBron with it. So I knew right then and there it was going to probably hold some value. It's a very classic, you know, piece. Uh, and then I was like, yo, this is going to be great. But then I ended up paying like 20K for it. It's worth about 24 now. So it's still uh, held its value. I appreciate it a little bit. But Bro, that's, I could have got it at is, a better is, is cost. That, is that not 20% higher? No. Than you paid? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm, is it 20%? Is so 20%? Is, if, if it's increased with 4K. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah. Is there fluctuates between 22 to 24? So I mean, that's twenty percent. Tell me anything you can buy today that's worth six months later twenty percent more. Name me anything. Yeah, rare. Yeah. Which as very well rare. you can enjoy and wear every lucky. day. Yeah, and you can actually. Uh, yeah, it's a great way to park some money. But um, you know the funny bit is what I really, really find funny. Mm -hmm. Like this is actually funny. But guys actually think they can fucking pull birds with nice watches. Oh yeah, no, most girls have zero clue, dude. <laughs> <laughs> bro <laughs> unless it's like blinged out like you're better off if you want to just no, get no not get, even blinked out fucking um, girls will do a runner like or they're, yeah. they're just there to steal it but whatever but I, I not that I am the most handsomest guy on the planet I'll tell you that ironically I'm on the fresh and fit podcast <laughs> I look very fresh but I'm not that fit bro but whatever <laughs> um, I mean unless you're a fucking six foot nine uh, like yourself handsome strong whatever and you wear a nice watch for a fat cunt like me wearing a nice watch doesn't well, make a change you, you got you, you got a way better piece on than I do right now and yeah but you'll, you'll still you'll still pull, pull more checks than me like. uh, well here's the thing if people know watches they respect it but let, let's be real most girls don't know watches i mean most one girl told me Yo, your rolex is fake and i was like well you're stupid like what this is not a fake watch but uh what did whatever. you do with her huh what did you <laughs> i ended up banging her actually <laughs> <laughs> revenge yes. revenge yes what a guy that's my <laughs> yeah. guy bro that's my guy earlier today let too me, oh wait <laughs> let me tell you let me show you close up this is not fake like <laughs> this is yeah real. no man but um but no when after i saw that video actually so i saw that video and I was like, damn, I need to like step my game up, learn more about watches, et cetera. Because one, one of my other buddies, John from Modern Life Dating, shout out to him. He has uh, the John Mayer um, gold yeah. green face green Daytona. Daytona. Yes. Reference number 116508. Uh, you know, reference numbers, man. Yeah. So yeah. he had that and he was like, bro, what are you, what are you doing? Like, yeah. what are you doing with, with the OP, you know, that you paid that much money for? Like, what the fuck are you doing? So I was like, damn, okay. Maybe I do need to step up my knowledge and stuff it's, like it's that. It's a nice watch, bro. It's, ni it's a nice 5K watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this one, nice 5K watch? Yeah, that's nice okay. 5K watch. <laughs> Bro, well, what does it, doesn't it retail for like... fucking paying half of a fucking gold green down the Daytona, bro. Well, I, I'm trying to think here. Um, what is the what is the retail on these uh, these OPs? It's, isn't know, it like 10? sterling. They're 4,800 sterling. Okay. Damn. What's that US? All right. Someone put, will convert it for us. Um, Sorry, I, think, I had to do that. No, no, no. It's all good. I think the retail on this one would have been like 10. But or around that area, but still, yeah, I mean, it appreciated. They don't make them anymore. So I was like, cool, because I was going to trade it because I was mad at myself. But I, I grew to like it. It grew on me because it's, it's a summer's watch, bro. We were in Dubai. It looks unbelievable. Fair yeah. play. Yeah. For Miami, too, it's good. But my life just my, my mind just blown when I heard what you paid for. It. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, just never, money, I'll just never I'll just never live it down you still the shite. Money. You shouldn't be listening to me. You still made money. So who am I? Well, no, I'm taking your advice, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Right. Um, so tell us about that AP that you got there, because that is a beautiful piece that you got there, man. AP reference number 15600 TI, a full titanium um, uh, Royal Oak. Incredible watch. It was limited to 500 pieces. A watch that I bought. 500 pieces only? Yeah, 500 pieces only. But the watch that I bought to celebrate my 1 million subscribers. Oh. It's insane. Let me, let me see. This is, this is a bad boy right here, man. This thing is, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a band uh, type uh, bracelet. That's um, rubber. Or rubber, yeah. Um, Bandage, whatever you like. How much is this thing retail? I don't know what the retail price is. I know what I paid for it. I what? lost. So I paid 65. Well, what's it worth? That's a better, because who cares about retail? You're never going to get anything no. retail nowadays. I don't give a shit about retail anyway, yeah. right? And be, the prices as well are different with the UK and the US, uh, different currencies, etc. I can't, like, it, I just... 
it's no point anyway. Yeah. Right. So I paid sixty five thousand. No, seventy two thousand dollars for this watch at the time. U.S. U.S. Uh-huh. Because I bought it in the U.S. Because they didn't have it in the U.K. yet, and I wasn't able to get it there. And retail. there's only five hundred in the world. Yeah. Now it dropped to about forty five, which was painful, but. On the other hand, I knew that I was never going to sell this watch anyway, so I didn't really give a shit. Mm-hmm. And now the watch is climbing to about 65. That was the last check. So someone offered me 65, but I, of course, said no, mm-hmm. because this watch is not for sale. But I do believe that this watch will go uh, go towards 80, yeah. yeah towards 80? Sure. Yeah, and then it's all right. Like I, I, I When was care. it released? I've already spent the money, right? Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm not looking at money back. Yeah. You know, the cool thing about this watch is as well, the, there's several color straps including it like a tiffany blue strap so this so you see the colors on the dial right this yeah. is music it represents music right ah. every color you see there there's a strap included with that so, oh and you take the strap off like this mm-hmm. so you can put another strap on yeah you could put like a red one on or yeah. something and people think people now go in the comments yeah i can do that with Macasio as well so i'm like yeah good luck with your casio bro <laughs> A hundred percent people are going to say that. Yeah. The people are always going to hate. So 500 uh, pieces of that, you got it for 65. You predict it's going to go to 80. 72. So 72. Okay. Um, that's a nice piece though. I ain't going to lie. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I fucking love it, bro. It's rare and it's, it's modern. It's a new one. Love how it fits. What year love was it released? Uh, 2020. 22. Okay. So it's, okay. It's full titanium. Bro. Yeah. It's full titanium. This is not steel. This is, this is, this is no dog shite. This is yeah. proper. It's heavy too. When I, when I was holding it, it's nice. It just feels good. Yeah. Love that piece. Um, so man, I got so many questions here. I got a list here, guys. Uh, all right. What are the benefits of getting a luxury watch? Like some people might be listening to this right now. 20,000, 72,000. What the hell? These guys are ridiculous why are they buying luxury watches, et cetera? And you guys know me. I mean, I'm, I'm a hardcore minimalist. I tell you all the time, save your money, invest in real estate, buy precious metals, buy real estate, buy, st- buy stock, he, buy everything. He came rolling in with a Lamborghini. No, I, I, I walked in. I, 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 I walked. I walked. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> I wish, man. Um, but one of the things that I do make an exception for when it comes to buying uh, luxurious items are watches. Um, so I, I guess I could give my reasons, but I think it's more important to get your reasons. What are the benefits of having a luxury watch and why do people do it? Like, first of all, when people say, ah, he spends $70,000 on a watch. Let me tell you one thing. I didn't spend a fucking penny, right? I converted money. So I converted the currency into a different currency. Because watches are very often seen as a currency. Now, it looks a bit fucking stupid when you go into a meeting, right? And you have, say, $70,000 in cash wrapped around your arm, right? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you one thing. If you have a watch of $70,000 on your wrist and you go into an important meeting, you start that meeting to two three steps uh, uh three step two steps three steps ahead of the of the person uh, on the other side of the table it's it sounds very fucking stupid and it is wrong in every way possible let me tell you right materialistic stuff but it is the reality if i go into a meeting personally and wear a nice watch i personally have more confidence mm-hmm. but as well in the beginning of my career when no one knew me honestly People took me more serious when I, when I was wearing a nice watch. But the main reason why watches are good, oh, you chase that fly. Come on, son, yeah. let her have it. Yeah, this we have fly, after me. Uh, fly flying about, <laughs> doing this fly things. But the main reason why watches are fucking unbelievably good is to store value, is to store money, yeah. is to use it. You can, you, listen, you can approach it as an investment, right? I, I, I like the, I don't like that, but whatever. Like, I mean, I grew my company from zero to where it is now. And I didn't do that because watches lost value. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I bought, I bought my sky dweller and it's worth double mm-hmm. I bought that. And it's worth 30 grand more. I bought this and it's worth about 10 grand. More. He, so he, did, he held up if you guys uh, missed it. Cause you got, we got a couple pieces here. We, yeah. You want to show the people what we got here? Yes. Okay. Uh, Rolex Sky Dweller, the most complicated Rolex ever. Cre- this is a Rolex Sky Dweller, it's the most complicated Rolex ever produced. Um, it's a Rolex with a lot of functions. Do, do you want me to go in detail? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah we, we so can go over each one. This is this is an annual calendar, right? uh-huh. and then it tells you which month. Which it, it t- literally this watch can tell you the month, the day, therefore the date, mm-hmm. the time, and you can also have a second time zone. It's the first time Rolex ever done anything like that. It's the first innovation of Rolex in 30 years as well, may I add. Mm-hmm. So incredible watch. Like, I mean, 
Fresh has a sky. My my co-host has a sky dweller. I don't like the sky sky dweller dweller personally, but I do acknowledge that it's a it's a it's a good watch. It's mega, man. It's mega. Yeah. But for me, it's like watches are not just like for watches are not just to have store value in, right? Which mm -hmm. is massive, right? It outperformed gold. It outperformed fucking everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, like bar crypto, I think. Mm -hmm. I think crypto. Uh, it was outperformer crypto, I think, but. Like name me anything you can enjoy every single day. You can put on your wrist every single day. Mm -hmm. You can be proud of while looking at it every single day. And it makes you money every single day. Like, tell me, name me any object in the world. That's true. Because I can't. That's true. I mean, it is, it is a fantastic storage of value. Um, and I'll say for me personally, right, um, you, it's, you get a conversation starter with the right people. Yes. Um, is, what I, is what I noticed with, with having a Rolex, et cetera. I, I noticed when you have a, a good piece on, you have a Rolex or whatever. Um, people that also have Rolexes or people that are successful tend to have Rolexes as well. If you have a nice piece on, they'll comment on it. It's a great conversation starter with like-minded successful people. Cause if someone's a watch collector, they're already at, a, it, it screens out losers a lot of the time. Uh, like to give you an idea when I'm in an elevator in the St. Regis or whatever, I speak, I try to speak with everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And you look at the wrist and you say, I recognize what they have. Right. Yeah. I also recognize when you wear a fake watch. So yeah, that's quite embarrassing sometimes, but whatever, uh, not my problem, but you're in an elevator chilling, whatever. And all of a sudden someone walks in with a nice watch. I know that I want to speak with this guy. Right. Yep. Bad luck for the guy, but I'm going to speak to him. Yep. The funny yeah. bit, right? It is a conversation starter in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And it does give you an edge in, in, in important meetings a, a lot of times. At least for me, it always has been. And, um, yeah, it gives me a fuck ton of confidence. Yeah. Wearing a nice watch. Like, I wear my Richard meal. I go out for dinner or go to a social event. I know I, I'm, I'm wearing the daddy watch, right? Can you show Can you show people that, that arm right there? Yeah, like yellow. I'm yellow. not a big fan of arms, but the, you, there's no doubt about it that they're definitely... Why are you not a big fan of arms? I don't... What the, color is your arm? I don't have one. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> well, I don't, I just, don't, I don't know, man. I just don't like that AP that you got, I think looks a lot better than the yeah. RM. Yeah. Until you have this one on your wrist and you wear it for, for a day or two. This, this watch will grow your fucking balls by fivefold. I oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it, it definitely uh, gets some conversations going because no, I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's that one worth? It's about $240,000. Yeah. That's a conversation starter for sure. Yeah. If anything, that's just I'm so insecure that money is is there to uh, to overcompensate you. <laughs> it's all my insecurity, bro. You don't have to put in the comments. I already know. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a great conversation starter with the right people, and um, it puts you it distinguish. It's it's a really good distinguishing feature, and it's subtle, you know. And what what are your thoughts on um, bust down versus plain Jane? <laughs> serious question yeah yeah it is a serious yeah uh, i gotta ask for the people for the rappers that watch the show fair enough yeah, yeah you're you are a watch expert like, so you give them uh, the lowdown the real all right all right i'll give it right i was talking about insecurities right i was me insecure whatever this is rappers showing how fucking insecure they are it's bizarre mate why the fuck would you do that right yeah first of all diamonds are very feminine right let me put it there right if you want sure. to put diamonds on your watch be what do whatever right I'll, I'll, I'll question other things, but that's different. But when you actually want to, like, this is the thing. People think that diamonds are expensive, but let me tell you, diamonds are not expensive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you then put those diamonds on the watch, you want to show that you want to show wealth because that's the only reason you do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you actually show them poverty because, first of all, um, it's not worth anything more. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. It's worth significantly less. Bust, so give me an idea, right? This watch bust down will be worth about ten grand less. Mm, and that's a AP Royal Oak. That's an AP Royal Oak, ten mm -hmm. grand less. Yep, that's quite pathetic, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's trash. Yeah, yeah. So well, don't bust it down. But people, people try to use that as statements. That's not a statement, mate. That's just. If you want to be a real baller, you buy factory diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. You don't go to a jeweler. Show them your uh, your platinum. Yeah, these are factory diamonds. So that is the that factory diamond set bezel, a factory diamond baguette, the baguette diamonds on a dial, our markers. This is that's factory, mm -hmm. right? The factory is more expensive. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yep. Have you ever seen those people that buy? Do you like cars? Uh, not not. Eh, I know about them, but I'm not like a car so guy. You know BMW, right? Yeah. Uh, or Mercedes, same Mercedes, of course. right? I like Mercedes. Yeah. Sorry. So it's it's these guys, right? That buy the cheapest Mercedes. And it's not Trick it out. 
there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Yeah. Like, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But where is something wrong with is when they buy the cheapest C class and badge it out and make it look like a C63. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is, that's pretty pathetic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because they want to make it look like a C63. Yeah. That's exactly how this fucking boss down shit works. Gotcha. Exactly that, Good in- but then in the watch game. You're pathetic when you do it. <laughs> you're pathetic when you drive one of those. So don't be a fucking pathetic loser. Buy factory or not, or not right? Do you want to be a baller? Wear factory. Wear factory. Oh. Now you got there. You showed them. That's that is a platinum day date presidential. Yes. Um, no, we the presidential bracelet. So pre, the word presidential is not really relevant then. Okay. So it's a, we got this. This is the platinum day date. Mm-hmm. Platinum day date with um, it has diamonds on the outskirts yeah. Yeah. and diamonds on the dials. Single set, tightest setting. Rolex is the best and fucking diamonds. It's bizarre. Now, how much is that one worth? About one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Okay, wow. Versus like the uh, the regular platinum day date is what eighty. You can get one for yeah, eighty. I think so I think you so, get yeah. one for eighty. So the putting the diamonds on it because it, yeah. The, okay. So fa- if you're gonna go diamonds, factory all the time. Only, only factory. Bro. Never only factory. never bust it down. No, never. Okay. And if you want to like, but like this is the point, right? Because the only reason why they bust shit down is to is to show wealth. Like, then buy a fucking diamond chain, bro. Just don't do that with your watches. Yeah. If you can't afford it, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but you should always go factory. So real ballers wear factory. That's it. I agree. Plain Jane all the way. Um, so let's say someone is watching this pod right now and is like, you know what, man? I want to get my first luxury piece. I want to stand out a bit. I want to, you know, be able to show out in the boardroom subtly and show people that I'm not... You know, I, I, I'm serious about certain things and I want to store some money. You know, inflation is yeah. a real thing. Inflation is, is real nowadays, especially uh, stock markets are tumbling. Uh, even the real estate market take a little Could bit of hit. Short, crypto. Man. It's a good, a good time when you're short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a big W earlier. Um, what should someone look for in their first luxury timepiece? First luxury watch should never be about money. It should always be about passion. If you really, okay. really love watches, you look at the parks of money in there. First of all, you need to buy what you really, really love. And that's the most important thing. Ah, that's why right? I ended up with this shite watch, according exactly. to you. Exactly. Listen, <laughs> right? Not everyone has taste. You're not born with taste, clearly. Okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, looking at your missus, you are. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> but that's not the fucking point, bro. Yeah. Like... Honestly, it for me with when you buy a first watch, it needs to be something like an achievement. Yeah. Right? You done mate, you done well in life, you're proud of something, right? Or you're you graduated or you got this big promotion at work. You celebrate that with a with a with a watch, right? And that, that will literally remind you of the fact what you've done to make to achieve something, right? It just it's a reminder, it's a motivation, right? Mm-hmm. For me, I always done that. And my f- first watch I had to sell, unfortunately, but I always say don't sell your first watch. But buy a watch mm-hmm. and 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 attach an, an incredible achievement to, to that or a memory and you'll never forget that. The second watch you then buy needs to be a watch that can make money. So for me, you know, and I think that's really good advice because for me what I ended up doing was I didn't want to spend, you know, I, I, I obviously, I'm sure a lot of you guys have read Robert Kiyosaki's book. He was on the show, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He talks about, you know, taking earned income and investing it into assets. Assets pay you passive income, and then you yeah. can go ahead and use that passive income. Basically, I bought this Rolex with, I have owned 12 real estate properties. At the time, I had like seven or eight or nine, and that's what like paid for this Rolex. So like I was able to do it with passive income. And that's why I tell people like, yo, don't take your earned income. I mean, you could if you want and park it in a watch that's going to hold value. But for me, it was like special to be able to buy a luxurious item with passive let, income. Let me tell you one thing. You're making more money with your watch than with your properties. 100%. Yeah, they probably appreciate it. I mean, I got, some, well, I'm talking in general, yeah, in general, sure. yeah, in general, like I, I've gotten some properties that went up significantly because of it's in Miami, et cetera. But, but the last two years. Yeah. Next yeah. two years. Sorry. Yeah. But like, if you talk, like if you go, you know, spread it out, real estate doesn't appreciate to this, you know, at the same speed. It's, We've sometimes. had some really good times in the UK, but for me to go into property in the UK now, I, I sacked everything off. I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. I heard man. real estate is a nightmare there. Brutal, man. Yeah. Like I'm, I'll be lucky to make five, six percent. Go fuck. I need. To, I, I don't. I don't want to make five, six percent. Yeah. I'll do something else. Yeah. Uh, um. So it's got to be passion. That's really good advice. So what are some really good starter watches for people to look into that might be interested in getting? You know, their first piece. It depends what budget, right? But I would say like a soft brand of Rolex Tudor. I think that's incredible. You what can't was that? Go wrong. Tudor. A Tudor. Tudor. Okay. Right, you've never heard of that? Are you joking? No, no, I never heard the shooter or Judah. Shooter. 
Shooter, like shoot with a gun? No, no. shooter. T- we need subtitles for this podcast. T U D O R. <laughs> My phone is ringing. Okay. Shooter? <laughs> Actually, it is ringing. Yeah. A- AGS represent, he called me. That's, that's the main property guy in the UK. He's one of the biggest property uh, developers in the UK. Nice. And when he says, I'm out of fucking UK, then I would go out of the UK with yeah, property. Yeah. Funny enough, he was just calling me. He, he heard me, I think. Probably. All right. But now, Tudor. Tudor is a sub-brand of Rolex. Right? Okay. T-U-D-O-R. Okay. It's some people on, on the internet say it's like a poor man's Rolex, and I would tell them, go fuck yourself. It's a completely different brand, right? But it's actually a really cool, exciting brand where Rolex does exciting things because Rolex doesn't do really exciting things. They don't really go outside of their comfort zone. Rolex does everything perfect and and straight, and that's Rolex. But with Tudor, they're more playful. Okay. I think it's a really, really good starting point. It's a watch you can buy between, say, two and five thousand dollars, and you'll never lose a fucking penny in your life, which is incredible. Okay. Right? Well, it's a starter watch. All right. Um, let's say they want. They're like, you know what? You know, Nico, I, I just want a Rolex. I, I want to get in the game. I want to yeah. go hard. What do you What do you suggest for some good uh, starter pieces? It depends. For I I like I like I like it when a watch is suitable towards yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So towards your life. I travel a lot, so GMT will be handy, right? I love a Submariner. Don't get me wrong, but if I look on Google now or go on Chrono Twenty Four, if I want to buy a Submariner, there's a million of them, right? And next to that. When is the last time I done proper diving, right? Mm-hmm. You see? <laughs> I mean, when is the last time I tried to fucking bear fight a fucking shark yeah. with my own hands? Yeah, yeah. Like in a bay of fucking whatever. It hasn't happened yet, but whatever. So I don't need a Submariner. I don't, yeah. well, I, it's pointless. Yeah. GMT is more functional because yeah. I travel a lot, and that's yeah. what I like. And I actually then use the mechanical functions of this watch. Okay. So um, those are some good, good ones. So let's say um, someone's kind of like me, right? And they're, all right, I want to buy a piece. I want to wear it. But at the same time, I want it to hold value, right? And never, you know, almost hold value bare minimum, never go down and or even possibly appreciate. Yeah. What are some good investment so, pieces for guys out there that are a little bit more conservative and want to park their money somewhere so, very safe? So first of all, to give you that answer, um, if, if anyone in the world will ever tell you that, 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 that this watch will never lose value, uh, they're fucking lying to you, right? Fair enough. They're fucking okay. lying to you because no one has a glass bowl. No one knows what the market will do, whatever, right? Um, and don't get me wrong, Rolex is a mass product, right? There's, they produce about a million watches a year. That is a mass product. I wouldn't even look at Rolex, to be honest, because I would actually look at AP because they make 40,000 watches mm, a year. Ding. So yep. I would rather be in that spectrum. So what you need to look up is just simple logic. How many, how many people a year will want a new Rolex in the world? Is that more or less than a million? It's probably going to be more. Yeah, right? definitely more. So you're always good with a Rolex. In the next five, six years, you're always good. Until Rolex ramps up the production, which they're working on at the moment, um, and ramps the production up, that's a different story. But that's not going to be happening in the next four years, five years anyway. You see what I mean? Yeah. But I would look at a, a brand like AP. AP has always been there, will always be there. The Royal Oak has saved the Swiss watch industry uh, single-handedly themselves in uh, 1972. I mean, it's fucking insane, right? And I would park my money rather in Royal Oak stuff but you're or in, in AP. But you're always safe with Rolex as well. But for me to tell you that you never lose money on that watch, that would be a fucking lie because I wouldn't be able to predict that. Okay. What it's are, most likely not gonna lose, by the way. But gotcha. You, you know it's funny. Uh you're you're like the first or second watch actually, yeah, you're the second watch expert I know that told me it's better to park your money in an AP than, than a is. Rolex. It is. And, and it, it is, it's the logic because AP is like Rolex is like Porsche. Mm-hmm. AP is like Ferrari. Mm. You see? Yeah. And then produce less. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of more people uh, every year wanting APs than, than they actually produce, more than 40,000. And AP is still a family-owned company, and they're not going to ramp up production because they don't have the capacity to do so. Mm. That's why you're always it's saying. The value high. 
And I will say this too. Um, we, we, Nico, uh, lectured me right before this podcast, by the way, guys, about buying uh, an AP because I was going to get I was like, hey, I want to get another watch. What do you think about this piece? We, are we going to tell them about that lecture? Yeah, of course. You want to? Of course. You're going to go in a big boy game now. Yeah, okay. You so play with the big boys. <laughs> it's time to play with the big boys. So, bro. yeah, let's show them that AP. Uh, th- this is the, you give them the, because you know the reference number and all that. I, I just know it's a Royal Oak. Royal Oak 15400. Uh, a watch that, that in, in this shape, this generation, was introduced in 1972 with reference number 5402. Um, we're talking about, I think, the fifth or sixth generation of this watch. Mm-hmm. Um, 15400, very, very, um, initially when it was introduced, not a very popular model, but whenever uh, the watch market started insanely increasing about four, three or four, year, four years ago, this was the watch to get. Mm. A watch that I traded with a blue dial at a certain point over a hundred grand. Wow. Yeah. Which blue, the, the, that this, one with a blue dial? Yeah. That same exact? Yeah. What year? That was on worn 2019. Wow. And that was about a year ago. So if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong here. When it comes to AP and classes, it's, um, is it what? Green up top, blue below, black, and then know, gray? Colorblind, bro. <laughs> but, i mean that's what i was told like that's how you kind of can distinguish like the, the from price points typically like the i think green is the most no, expensive like, blue and then black no, it's like what is what what is in demand what is the flavor of the day right if AP okay. brings out a tiffany color blue uh blue dial watch then that will fucking fly right like mm-hmm. whatever it's the color of the it's what the second hand the secondary market will pay for it it's the same as sneakers right mm-hmm. i prefer the rhodium above the black I don't understand why the blue is more valuable. I don't understand it because I actually don't like the blue. I think it's, it's dark, not a right? nice blue. It's dark, right? Uh, it's, it's not a nice blue. On this tapestry dial, which is a um, pattern and a technique to make dials, whatever, I'm not going to be that boring. Don't worry. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, it just it doesn't look nice, that blue. The rhodium, the ro- the, the rhodium color, the gray color, that is the daddy for me. The sure. gray? You like the gray? Yeah, yeah. Not the white? No, no, no. You have a really nice uh, Chrono one right there. Yeah. And you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and put that one on since you uh, been exactly, making fun of me. And my shite watch. Yeah. Oh, this is the fourth time he's talking about. It. He's yeah. really hurt. He's it, really bro, hurt. it hurt my feelings, man. I was like, goddamn. Yeah, listen, <laughs> they, you should have bought a proper watch back on. <laughs> you had fucking twenty grand to spend. You could have bought any gold watch, but you go for a steel op with a red oh, color. Man, I can't wear gold. Uh, it's haram, bro. Oh yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. That's because I originally, you know, what I really wanted, but I couldn't get it. Uh, because I, I'm, you know, I'm not the best Muslim, but I'm working on it, and I don't want to like do like just ridiculous stuff that doesn't need to be done, right? I'm already like kind of fornicating and stuff. I need to do better. Um, I don't really drink. I don't. I've never done a drug, but you know, wearing gold, that's just like kicking a dead horse at this point. Ah. So what I did want though, until I found out it was white gold, was the presidential blue face. Um, uh. Day date. Day date. Sorry. Yeah. That's what nice I wanted. Watch, nice yeah. Watch. I think it you can get it for about 30 to 50k, somewhere in that range. I think so, yeah. Yeah. The funny bit is I work currently in a in a in a Muslim country, and funny enough, I want my child to grow up around Muslim culture, right? Uh-huh. This is one of the reasons why we're here as well. Next to that, business is good. And fuck me, I love that son. Mm-hmm. You're used to son in Miami anyway, but I'm living on an island, like I mean. If you see the sun once or twice a year, you're lucky. This is a cleaner, safer Miami, Dubai. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely cleaner. Yeah, <laughs> facts. <laughs> safer. Than that. I mean, fuck me, that place could be a shithole. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I'm not calling Miami a shithole, by the way, because I actually always enjoy Miami. A big represent, big shout out to everyone in Miami. I get a lot of love in Miami, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, from all the states in America, um, Florida, and, and in this case, Miami, and as a city, I get recognized the most. Mm-hmm. I love Miami. Yeah. Um, but there's also a Steve. Steve will do it. As, Steve is there from, from oh, yeah, there. Shout out to Steve. I mean, he's yeah, shout RMs Steve. everywhere, giving people Steve's pre- crazy. presidential Rolexes. If I, if I, if shout I, out to him. If I die and can reincarnate, I want to be Steve. Yeah, he lives right down the street from me, too. Fuck out. We're, we're on Brickle. So shout out to him, man. He genuinely doesn't give a fuck. That guy, big shout out, Steve. Yeah. 100%. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll clip this and send this to you. Yep. Maybe we'll friends, be friends after. <laughs> We've tried to hook up three times, you know. And then he was away, and then he was going to Dubai or something. I was going to Dubai. We're going to do so. 
every time it just fucking missed. So ah, we, we weren't able to meet up. Uh, he has some insane watches. Yeah. Uh, all, uh, all done by my good friends from Timepiece Trading, by the way. Oh, yeah. I Neil, big shout out. Sean, big shout out. Fucking legends. Love mm-hmm. them. Um, really great guys, right? Miami, mm-hmm. Miami is well represented in the watch game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Dubai, Miami, etc. No, Dubai is mine. If, if Neil and Sean, go fuck yourself. Dubai is mine. <laughs> uh, fucked up, bro. Uh, Dubai is mine. But uh, that's funny, man. What, what are we talking about? Because I lost the point. <laughs> uh, we were talking about... Um, we oh, talked yeah, about, about the AP about wearing gold watches. Because yeah. I, oh yeah. Yeah. So I wanted that. Pre- yeah. I wanted that white gold presidential. Yeah. And then I realized it was, um, you know, that it was white gold. So I was like, yeah. oh, I looked up, like, I looked it up online. It's Haram. Can't wear it. So I was like, okay, fine. Uh, so then I really wanted the uh the platinum day date, what you have, right. but not not with diamonds though, of course. And uh, I was just gonna get it like. 100% plain Jane. Then the 2022 version came out with the fluted bezel. And I was ah. like, oh, I like this. And then you made a video again. Shite. Fuck <laughs> hell, bro. <laughs> Shite. You it's- know why you can, re- I know how you can recognize the platinum fucking day date. Go it's, ahead. It, because it doesn't have, it has the presidential bracelet and it doesn't have a fluted bezel. Yeah. That's why, you know. It's and like, it's heavy as hell. And it's heavy. As, and it, that's just like, that's the daddy, bro. Yeah. And then they, then they put up this, 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 bezel this fluted bezel on is like yeah it could be you my know it's, gold, man. it's funny my, my watch buddy he, he's a watch connoisseur just like you he told me d- d- don't get that don't no. he, he agreed with you under he was like don't don't get that he was like if you're gonna get uh a day day um platinum get the air get the arab dial is what right. he told me get the arab dial oh, i was yeah, like yeah, yeah. Or, or or like what you have here but i i, I didn't want diamonds on mine uh-huh. so he was like yeah just get the arab dial but the arab dial is expensive it's like a hundred like yeah, right now the cheapest don't, one don't, i saw don't spend that money on hundred something thousand hundred three thousand i was like oh man that's that's kind of od no, you know don't so. do that. funny bit is um like i said because i sell a, wa- a lot of watches here right and i know people say white gold or gold haram a lot of people here yeah, they still wear Muslim. it. They still wear it. Yeah, and um, I mean, I can understand it. I can, and I understand the thought process behind it as well. But I, I, I don't think it should be a limitation for you to enjoy a really nice watch. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it definitely. I, I, it's just that, like, I was like, ah, you know what? I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. So I was just like, I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. And I really like that Arab. He talked to me. He was like, yeah. Because here's the thing. He was like. If you're going to get a, a platinum data, get the Arab dial, right? Because it's ah. going to hold the value. You'll be able to sell it anytime you want, et cetera. Uh, but he was like, don't buy it, though. It's it's kind of overpriced. He was like, if you want to, you can. You're just going to hold this value. But, the, you know, I wouldn't suggest you buy it. Um, and I was like, damn. And then you also have the the other platinum Daytona, right? Yes. Uh, which you have that one, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I have the Dottie, the, the one with the factory diamond bezel, the Arabic numerals. Oh, you got, oh, you got it all the way. Yes. Turned up. Show you a photo. Yeah. 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 You have it all the way that, that with, with the diamonds and the Arab dial. What is that worth? 200 K 200 K. You know, who just texted me Victor from, uh, that's, the, that's, uh, that's Andrew's guy. Tay's guy. Okay. He just texted me random. Oh, wow. I was just talking about that with you earlier. Yeah. That's, shout out to that's Andrew. Much. Big shout out, Victor. Uh, and Andrew. Yeah. I hope you stay strong, bro. Um, let me see. Let me see the watch. Let me see the photo. This watch is mega, bro. Yeah, no, it's it, Drake has it too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, it, it's a, it, I saw, saw uh, this weekend someone had it. Um, it looks even better in person because I never really liked it until I saw it in person. But it has like that burgundy, you know, outer uh, dial, right? No, sorry. And it's a, it's a blue face. Outer part is um, burgundy, and uh, it's it's platinum and it's heavy. It scratches easy though. Oh, that oh wow, that is nice. Should should pull that up to the camera real fast, yeah, so I'm people can. Good, I'm trying to get a fucking good photo here, but for some reason I could put on the screen uh, when we edit this, or well, if we do edit it, who, who knows if we're gonna edit no, there's it? There's a normal version, <laughs> Tom. Oh, hold that up to the to the camera real quick. Look at that. There's oh yeah, that thing is nice. Yep, yep. That thing is nice with the Arab dials as well. Some people complain and say it's too busy, but I like it. I think it's nice, but maybe that's because I'm biased because I'm Arab myself. But um, that's because people have how much? How much is that one worth nowadays? Two hundred k? This one. Th- this is mine. What is that worth? Two hundred k? Three hundred. Yes. Is that your rarest piece? No. What's your rarest piece? piece two piece unique APs. Two two what? Piece uniques. Piece unique. Piece unique. That's the only one in the world. Okay. Two of them. Once again, if we're actually edit this you'll see them on the screen right yeah. about now kind of, <laughs> there's a video i've done a video with part of my watch collection with a good friend of mine of mark marco uh-huh. 
as part of my watch collection. And there's yeah. my APs, my my vintage Daytonas. They are extremely rare, 14 karat stuff. I'll not I'll not go into detail, but like my how many watches do you have? Count today, 63. 63? Yes, count today. That's not, Six. <laughs> not, not even, that's not, that's luxury watches. I, I have, I have literally every G-Shock you can imagine as well. How much is your collection worth? I don't know. Never, never count. A couple it. M's got to be. I have watches that are worth more than seven figures. Well, one piece, yeah. One piece is worth more than seven figures? Yeah. Which one is that one? Can you disclose? Oh, the Pichonique is worth, Okay. Okay. See, I, I and another one. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, and you know, beginner level, so I don't know these like no, no, watches. Listen, listen, like I don't get me wrong. I didn't pay seven figures for that watch as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, I I probably quadruple. I will probably quadruple my money, or if not more. But wow, that's not the point. But like every time I was like, I literally always spend my full bank account on the watch, and then I had to rebuild myself, and I've done that a million times. Mm -hmm. I also had to sell my watch collection many times. Mm. Have you ever had an issue with like, because I know a lot of people that want to get in the watch game are worried like, yo, what if I can't sell it or time? If you can't sell it, then you have the wrong people around you, mate. Mm. And if you're worried about that, you contact me or my business or anyone. Or if you're a Miami uh, timepiece trading, like, mate, you get money within, within the same day, within the next R. Yeah. Right? So just, you just got to be intelligent about, about it's you're converting you're converting US dollars, which is, by the way, worthless at the moment anyway. But... <laughs> Just point proven. Yeah. It's not a dig, by the way, to Americans because I love Americans. Mm -hmm. Love America. God bless America. Luckily, it's not made in China, but that's different, right? I, um, uh, if you, it's basically USD trading in for a watch, uh -huh. and that watch is money, and you yeah. can trade that back in if you want. Yeah, and it's done within an hour. Um, what about scratches? The scratches, the the, the time, no. the the question that people always ask: Do scratches affect the value? And should you buff your watch and get the yeah. scratches removed? So this watch was built to resist fucking any force on the planet, right? Uh -huh. So yes, you get scratches. So, so what, right? Scratches a story. It's, it's part of the thing. Part of the watch, right? Doesn't lose value. No, from scratches. Now, if you buy a fully stickered, fully stickered new old stock vintage watch and you fucking start wearing it, I would declare you crazy. But it's different. Modern watches doesn't matter. Okay. And you, and whenever it goes into service, every four years, every four or five years, you polish it. It's fine. Okay. With modern watches doesn't matter. So polish it, buffering and puffing doesn't do anything. If it's done by some, someone that actually knows what he's doing, yes. Okay. And you, I wouldn't go to the first watchmaker and say, okay, polish this because it's actually a really difficult job. And Who do you go to if, if someone wants to get their watch? I would either go to the brand themselves uh -huh. or to the place where watch dealers go. That one place that watch dealers go. Don't go to the first guy you meet on the street in uh, Brickle. Uh, or whatever, don't mm -hmm. because let me tell you one thing: they fuck up your watch left, right, and center. So don't do that. Um, so we talked about AP being yeah. one of the best pieces for holding value, just because they don't manufacture. Yeah. What if someone is dead? Because let's be honest here: you got the Rolex people that are never going to switch. I, I was one of those guys. I was like, "Fuck AP," and then uh, I spoke to my buddy. He really the sold me. People always convert because people that drive a Mercedes at a certain point always wanted to. Drive a Maybach or which is Mercedes. True, but then they'll be like, ah, oh, fuck that. I'm not going to go. Well, actually, you did compare a Mercedes versus a Ferrari, so that makes sense. But let's say someone wants to stick with Rolex. What are um, three investment pieces that they should buy that pretty much will hold its value for the majority? So uh, the history has taught us several things, including that the least popular models at the time become the most valuable. Look at the Daytona. That was the least popular model of Rolex. They couldn't even give it away. If you bought a pla if you bought a precious metal day date day date in 36 mil and you had a nice AD, they would usually give that watch away for it. They would usually give you a Daytona for free. Really? This is how crazy that is. The Daytona wasn't popular at all. Yeah now they, nowadays everybody wants a Daytona. They uh, want the, the green face. The, uh, exactly. The panda. Exactly. The, yeah. So the watch today Vintage Daytonas, this is one of the reasons why they're so fucking expensive, mm -hmm. right? The vintage Daytona, yeah. like 100K plus. Okay. It's because they're, they're, not, they're not much out there. Yeah. But at a certain point, it will become valuable, you see? Okay. And that, that is what happens. So, number so one, you say long, Daytona? No, long term, absolute long term, I would look at watches that people do not want today. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's including your shite. No, I'm joking. Bro. I'm joking. <laughs> my, my, th th this Rolex right here, pretty uh, much. I'm this joking, one. Bro. This I'm one. Joking. The one you make fun uh, of that me. Was, that was dirty. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Hurt but my no, feelings, man. I would look at the Yacht Master too. Uh -huh. uh, it's a watch that no one wants. It's a horrible looking piece as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
but because there's not many out, out there in the world and in 20 years whenever that watch is gone that watch is big right it's a big rolex mm-hmm. right it's i think the biggest rolex ever so i mean in the future watches are getting bigger that could potentially be a massive money maker this is long term bro mm-hmm. long term um i would look at the rolex milkaus okay always overlooked always overlooked and it's a really easy to step in cheaper watch cheaper rolex right mm-hmm. so that would be a good point so it wasn't massively popular right mm-hmm. but i would always look at the least popular models okay always so let's okay uh what about if someone wants something that is good now something they could wear won't get made fun of well, like Silverna, mate. you can't go wrong with Silverna. Why, why, like which which, mo- which models which models would you say or just the 41 mil, just the new 41 mil. One, Any six, color? Six, one, uh, steel, mate. Just steel. Just, just steel? Doesn't just matter? Steel. Gold is haram. Okay. Just uh, any color. Even the, the Starbucks one you hate? Fair, I love the yellow gold blue dial, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that was just so beautiful. What about that Starbucks one that you say is shite? No, I don't like that. No, no, no. Okay, so don't get the Starbucks one. No, don't get Starbucks. Yeah, they're... better than the Hulk, though. <laughs> The Oak is just horrible. <laughs> I, I don't care why people pay so still paying so much money for that watch. It blows my mind. Because it doesn't fit with any outfit. Yeah. Period. <laughs> like this year. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Um okay. it's black watch, bro. It's just too normal. Okay. Top five Rolexes in your top five APs and top five Pateks. Wow. You put me on the spot there, bro. I know. Rolex, Daytona, Vintage Daytona, because that's the most important. Ideally, reference number 6265, number one, Rolex. Okay. Number two, um, I love chronographs, mate. I'm okay. a big, big chronograph. Let's, see, let's show them that chronograph one AP that you got. That is a really nice one right here. And a chronograph for the people, uh, can you tell them that what, what basically it gives you different time zones, right? No, no. Chronograph is, is just a timekeeper. It's just a stopwatch. And mm. you can actually, not with this watch, but with the Daytona, you can actually actually measure speed and distance as well. Mm. So I can manually, and this is how people tracked back in the day races, you can, I can manually tell you how fast you're driving. I can, with a, if I have a Rolex Daytona here. Wow. Which I don't. So that's going to be difficult. <laughs> but I... <laughs> If you have, like, I, you can, I, I can do that immediately. Wow. There's a tachometer on, mm-hmm. the, on a watch. Basically, you can do that with a Speedmaster as well, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's not just Rolex. It's Zenith. It's uh, everyone that has a tachometer on the down as a chronograph. You can okay. measure distance and speed. So, a Daytona, what else? Vintage Daytona. Six Vintage six Daytona. Five, ideally, 665. Yeah. Yep. 1987. I have that watch. Uh, a pre-ceramic or a pre-Daytona cosmograph. Pre, pre uh, the, a Rolex chronograph pre Daytona, mm-hmm. meaning prior to 1963, reference mm-hmm. number 6034. I love that watch, or 6038, but I like 34 better. If we actually put the, my editors will love you if I actually put like the watches on the and a big shout out to you, yeah, honestly, unbelievable. If we if we do actually put the watches on, we'll see. You need to because uh, to ask Johnny, Johnny knows. Johnny, okay. I've, I've, I've told this story before, not the five Rolexes, but. Usually three, so it okay. actually make me think. Um, of course, the bluesy because that's where it, where it started for me, mm-hmm. right? One, um, and I'll I'll, na- I'll do the new generation, the one two six six one three LB. Mm-hmm. LB stands for lunette blue. Okay, blue. lunette is bezel, blue is okay, blue. Um, four, I would say, fuck rainbow. No, Damn. I, I, the jam setting on that is mega though. See, it's, it's what the jam setting. Gem set. The gem is a diamond or. Oh, sapphire. oh the gem setting. Okay, gem, gem. It's, it's okay. mega. It's done levels above any anyone anything else. But I just love the green Dow Daytona again. Okay. One one six five or eight. Shout out to John that. MLD. John Mayer. Yep, the John Mayer. Yep. Yeah, I have that watch as well. And five. <laughs> Fuck. Arab dial? They? No. No. No, I would like day date. Just normal day date. Day, which color? Man, which man, color way? It's my platinum day date. Just always go, go, always go platinum? Yeah, I, I love the platinum because I love that ice blue dial so much. Yeah. Which version is best, Arab dial or? No, but what is best is personal preference. 
Fair I, I love the Arab Dal. I love it for other reasons, but this is this is this is the Dali. This is the Mac Dali of the Platinum Day the Day Dates. Mm-hmm. There's one version with Arabic, Arabic numerals that's double the price, but that's pointless. Yeah, it's not worth double the price. To me. Yeah, this is actually worth. This is top of the range pl- uh, Platinum Day Date or mm. top of the range Day Date for me. That is it. What if you had it with diamonds and Arab Dial? What is it worth? Yeah, that's that, that's double. That's yeah, double. it's it, it, okay. So okay, you're saying you, you're referring to it with the diamonds in it too. Yeah, okay, for me, the numerals are not worth that much. Yeah, fair enough. Um, for you, I can understand, but not for me. Like yeah, yeah. I I actually want to change the date wheel to Dutch. Oh, a Dutch date wheel. That's what I would really like. That'd be nice. Do they, do they even have those? Not right. Yeah. They do. They shoot. They shoot. Yeah. Okay. They have a. They have it in thirty six mil anyway. Mm. Vintage ones. Yeah. Okay. So we named uh, name. I guess for AP, it's easy. Royal Oaks. Royal Oaks. All day, every day. You can yeah. do five models of Royal Oak, but it always end up Royal Oak. Okay. What what are what are those five models? You would say. Uh, Skeleton. No, that's a fifteen four oh seven. Yeah, that's in the top five uh, for for sure. I would say five four oh two the OG A serial. Okay. Is that a 41 or no, that was a 37. That was 39. Okay. 39, yeah. Um 15202. Uh-huh. Rose Gold, 15202 R, Rose Gold Blue Dial, one of the nicest Royal Oaks ever created. Mm-hmm. The ceramic perpetual calendar. Mm. Uh s- skeleton. Okay. Insane. The 15407 is the full steel skeleton. The SD, right? Double balance wheel. And then the 15,600 15, for me. My buddy had one that tells you like, it's worth like, you said it's worth uh, like 200 some thousand, 240,000. It was like a green face. It, had, it, was, it was a chrono and it had elevation and some other stuff. You might know. Elevation on the dial. On the dial. What did the dial say? Damn it. Month, okay. day, date, everything. Year, yeah, I think it's perpetual. It's a perpetual calendar. Okay, yeah, it's incredible. But, but it was like it was like a rare one that like only a couple were made or something like that. Yeah, but the, there's always a couple of perpetual calendars. Like I mean, perpetual calendars are high, highly like you need to, you need to think about this, right? Yeah, a perpetual calendar is a mechanical object. It's a watch, mechanical. It's all made. And there's no no electronics with this, right? Yes, this will absolutely fucking blow your mind, right? So there's 364 parts in this watch. Parts, screws, levers, gears, all sorts of things. Yeah. All these mechanical parts are able to tell you the exact time, the exact day, the exact date, what that is, the exact month, the exact year, and the exact position of the moon. Yes, that's what it was. Right? It tells the moon position. Yeah. Moon position. Yes. And that is accurate till the year 2100. It will even be able to tell you if it's a leap year, yes or no, mm. right? That's incredible. And that's made uh, with, a, with a watch of steel or precious metal and 364 screws, levers, and gears. Is that not fucking mind-blowing? That is pretty crazy. Is that not fucking insane? Yeah. And this is why I love watches that's, so that's, much. That's... And this is actually, instead of you looking at models, I would love to educate <laughs> you more about that. Yeah. Right? Because that is the core and the passion of watches. I'm a student in the game. I'm learning. Like That is, that is what it's the beauty of it right my people the people that watch freshman podcasts are probably like watching like what the hell i didn't know myron was into it like this yeah it's, it's, it's something like uh that i've been kind of doing on the side studying researching and and it's actually a really good way to to, to store some money on the side All right. but for me it's it, I, w- I would love to to bring you through br- bring you up and, and teach you a bit about movements and about why certain things are certain reasons because keep in mind without watches today we wouldn't be able to fl- without watches at the Back yeah, in the day, yeah. we wouldn't be able to fly. Yeah. We, the world would have looked completely different. Yeah. Absolutely completely different if Cartier uh, didn't bring out the Santos for Alberto Santos Dumont. Or there's stories like this where watches were vital during the Second World, First and Second World War as well. Yeah. And uh, like it's insane. And, and a, a fact that you bring 364 mechanical parts, keep in mind it's metal. Right, not not fucking electronics. No yeah. electronics. No electricity. Yeah. Nothing. A mechanical. It winds itself, and it's accurate to the and year two thousand one hundred. What makes it keep going? Like, because I know I notice if you like stop wearing a Rolex for a bit, it'll just like turn off. Yeah, it's, perpe- it's called perpetual. Perpetual means non-ending, right? Uh huh. 
but that energy needs to be um, uh, gained first, right? How does it go from you moving your hand so to sunlight? Rotor, there's a rotor, a rotor, sorry for the language, please. Uh, <laughs> me not speak English. Rotor in your watch. Right? Okay. That rotor spins and it loads up, loads up a power reserve. The power reserve is a spring. We call it the mainspring. And that mainspring is just a wire, right? Mm -hmm. And you can store energy in wires, you know, right? Or in metal. And that just brings in tight and that stores right that's energy and that s slowly gives out energy to the second hand which ticks mm. right and that's what it is so a, a rotor is actually a pendulum of a clock gotcha think about it interesting and and it's really uh, fascinating to to know that like watches were literally critical for these you know historic life moments in life moments. and man you know apollo's apollo whatever the moon mission uh, people are saved. Lives were saved, mate. Wow. Insane. Yeah. And, you know, ever since I was a kid, I guess with, with me, I, I've, I, I'll never forget. My aunt bought me oh, my I first it, Casio watch when I was a kid. I was like maybe like seven or eight years oh, old and she yeah. bought me a watch. And I just like really enjoyed wearing it on my left hand, being able to look and knowing what time it was at all times. And I just grew up with always wearing a watch. I thought it was weird when people didn't wear watches. If I don't wear a watch, I feel naked. Like right now, I feel naked. Did you judge when you were a kid that the people, were, other kids were wearing a watch on the on the right? Because I did that. Yeah, I think it's weird if you wear a watch on the right. Yeah. But I mean, as a kid, I got a couple friends kid. that do. Andrew wears his watch on the right. And I've always thought that was weird, but yeah. eh, whatever. Andrew, so, Andrew is a bit different yeah a bit weird <laughs> <laughs> that's why the world hates him so much um you know haters gonna hate but yeah i mean it's not hate <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but no i i always uh i always wore on my left hand and then also because like in islamic faith you know you're supposed to do like the religious stuff with your right hand etc you don't want it in the right hand no, but when i do other stuff i do other stuff in my right man yeah um say nothing <laughs> <laughs> I, I you could have then loaded up the power reserve with that, but whatever, bro. Uh, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, like so. Ever since then, I was like, I, I, I've always thought like it's weird when people don't wear watches. Like, w w how do you tell? Oh, I just look at my phone. That's weird. You just, know what I find weird, right? I don't find it weird because actually, the Apple Watch and smart watches has get, has helped the industry so much. You have no idea. Right? Got people wear watches again. Ma? gotten people to it's gotten yes, people to exactly. watch it again because it's basically the watch game is basically a fight for someone's wrist right fact mm -hmm. that's what the watch game is and all we need to do is making sure that there's more people wearing watches so smart watches <laughs> got people to get that would never wore watches Fair before enough, yeah. got people getting used to having something on their wrist and then all of a sudden they start figuring out that oh we can buy a nice strap for that that, that, oh, that looks nice and all of a sudden they started seeing as a fashion and then all of a sudden, next level was mechanical. Next level was luxury. Wow, I I never thought of it that way. That the Apple Watch and these you know electric and oobs and all these other weird you know health fitness watches, which I have an Apple Watch myself, kind of got people to wear watches because I've always worn a watch since I was a kid. I, I actually, as a matter of fact, I kind of judge people when they don't wear a watch. A little guilty. You know what I confession judge? of mine? When someone wears an Apple Watch and I'm in a conversation with the, with them and they're constantly looking at their watch. That really fucking pissed me off. I find it so disrespectful. Yeah. And I, I, I told someone that like a deal was, uh, was doing a deal was selling the watch. I'm like, sorry, mate. It's just, that's not respectful. Damn. Like, I don't like that shit, mate. And you need to be respectful. Right. And this is what an Apple watch, like, I understand the functionality of an Apple watch. Don't get me wrong. I have three of them because how can I judge something if you don't own it? Right. Fact. So Fair enough. I own it. I bought it. Try it. Whatever. Shite. It's, no, it's not shite. It's functional. Right. And it shows you can be fit and whatever. And so, yeah. Keep it real, bro. You know, it's shite. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. Right. <laughs> right, Tell me how you really feel. But let me, let, let, okay. We wanna, you're an adult. <laughs> you don't wear your life and you're wearing a fucking toy on your wrist. Why is up the fuck, mate? Girl? What's wrong with you? Helps you find your iPhone, though. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Buy a new one, you cheap fucking <laughs> brokey. Brokey. No, 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 no. Like, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. You're an adult. You're 40 years old, 50 years old. Fuck off. Yeah. Right? Why the fuck are you wearing? Like, genuinely. Like, it's a toy, mate. It's a fucking toy. Fair right? enough. Um, so. <laughs> It is. <laughs> All right. So where are we at? Okay. So we, we were at APs, top five APs. Ceramic. Okay. APs. Now, uh, top five attacks. 50 to 70 P. 59. No, no, not 59. Le Mania based. Don't like it. Sorry. There's too much detail, isn't it? 50 to 70. First in-house, fully in-house, chronograph, perpetual, Patek Philippe. 50 to 70 P, bro. Green Dow. That's the daddy. 
fuck everything else. Um, I like Grand Complications, 6003. Isn't there like a $5 million one to Tiffany Patek that I think Leonardo DiCaprio won? Oh, yeah, it's fucking rubbish. Uh, (laughs) No, it is. This is, listen, Uh, Tiffany and Co. Go ahead, go go in, go in. Oh, no, no, Tiffany and Co are cunts, mate. They're fucking, (laughs) so, no, let me tell you, right? LVMH, right? The Louis Vuitton group, right? LVMH, right? The guy, the guy, the guys tried to buy the world, basically, right? Now they're trying to buy, they just bought, they just bought Tiffany and Co for 60 billion, right? Oh, wow. 60 billion, not with a B. Wow. For billion, not millions, babies, whatever. Insane, right? So this guy lets these kids run these country, companies, right? Mm-hmm. Now, uses Tiffany & Co. as a fucking toy. Tiffany is the most prestigious jeweler in the world, period. Mm-hmm. Fuck Harry Winston, Tiffany & Co., right? Yep. Fact. Yep. Have you ever heard of Harry Winston? Never have. Have you ever heard of T- Tiffany & Co.? Yeah. Fucking right. <laughs> right? Point proven, <laughs> right? Just there. There and then, point proven, nothing else. <laughs> And these guys just fuck with Tiffany like it's nobody's business, right? So they bring out this fucking 5711 with a Tiffany color dial, right? It's just a steel sports watch worth 25 grand, mate. Mm-hmm. The only difference is on the, on the case back, it says 170th anniversary. And there's 170 going to be produced. Actually, effectively, it's going to be 174 because one is going to be in the archives of Patek. One of them is going to be in the archives of Tiffany's. One is going to be in someone's owner, uh, like the owner, Cherry Stern or the kids or whatever, You know what I mean? It's going to be more than 170. But then, have you ever seen Leonardo DiCaprio buying any, wearing any mad diamond jewelry? No. He can't even stick with his same girlfriend for more than two years because then they get too old and then he needs to dump them, right? Smart move. Mm, Normal. But do you think he buys, spends a lot with Tiffany & Co.? Hmm question i know people that spend millions multiple millions a year with tiffany and they weren't allowed to buy that fucking watch wow right fuck you leonardo dicaprio that doesn't spend a fucking penny yeah or maybe buys one bracelet but because he's leonardo leonardo dicaprio and he does do good stuff in the world may i add yeah he does because there's no disrespect for leonardo dicaprio i love that guy wolf wall street is a great movie oh fuck my me. favorite I love one that guy. Yes. That from it from that's my yes. favorite leo movie do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Titties. yeah whatever <laughs> right <laughs> honestly i love the guy but the guy the guy in his total lifetime probably maybe spent one or two million i know people that spend that a year and because it's leonardo dicaprio here, here, here's your watch. And the same, like, they only want that watch on the wrist of famous people. So what they're currently doing is destroying their top fucking 170 customers saying, fuck you, you don't deserve one. We don't appreciate your business. We want to give these watches to people that are famous. Mm. How the fuck do you destroy your fucking round? Because they forget that Tiffany and Co will only be successful and valuable in the future because of these 170 people that are on top of the list of their customer base. Wow. And let me tell you one thing, one not one single person that is on that top 170 list has got a 5711 Tiffany. That's mind blowing. And yes, I have inside information. And yes, you can query that. And yes, I know exactly what's going on. Damn. Coming at Tiffany's neck, Tiffany rant. Oh no, they're fucking d- disgusting, man. I make sure to put a time this timestamp oh, yeah. so they know. Fuck you. We t- clip t- this. T- t- put it, please. <laughs> make a TikTok of it. Yeah, you, you, you put the camera on you. Go ahead. T- tell Tiffany how you really feel. Tiffany, your time is over, bro. Honestly, it breaks my heart, but LVMH has absolutely destroyed you from the inside. It's over. Tiffany and Co. is done. And that also means that people that buy double stamp watches with Tiffany and Co. and Patek Philippe, maybe this, I'm going way too much in detail now. It's okay. Uh, will also drop in value significantly because people find Tiffany and Co. and this is what I see in the industry so less important nowadays than it was a couple of years ago because it's irrelevant what they're doing. Would it be fair to say that they're no longer meh? They're shite? Tiffany and Co. is dog shite. Yeah. Oh, dog shite. Yeah, because the way they treat dog. their customers. Because. Tiffany is only here because of those customers. And if they don't have customers, Tiffany and Co. will be there. That's going to be the most expensive 60 billion LVMH has ever spent. Holy. All right. Funny enough, LVMH also owns Hublot. Now we know what, what's going on there. Right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let me ask you this then. It's not a joke. Yeah. I, not, I, I, I see did the conspiracy did. theories, but this was actually not a conspiracy theory. Holy. So, uh, questions. So this is a perfect segue. Top five most overrated watches. Um, 
Wow. Overrated. Um, Grand Seco, one of them. Okay. Uh, have you ever heard of it? No. Keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, you just no, no need to know. Yeah. I've, I've just introduced you to name. You're probably going to Google it sometime and whatever. Don't even Google it. It's not, not worth it. Okay. Um, Already forgot. <laughs> very good. Um, yeah, Hublot, obviously, right? I mean, Hublot is, is, a, is a fashion watch for people with more money than sense, like in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the name Daniel Wellington? No. No, it's like a cheap fucking $100 watch. That's like Hublot, but then people pay instead of $100, they're paying like 10000 for it. Oh, wow. Okay. It's just pointless, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Any models that you think are... Louis Vuitton. Okay. What they're doing is fucking dog shit, man. What are they doing? This is doing weird shit. This is fucking... They try to go into the watch game and they feel miserably and they, sit, they try to sell their watches really expensive, try to get someone on their hook. Mm. What about like maybe Rolex models or AP models that everyone has, but they're, they're trash? Or they're overhyped. No, there's not like or, Rolex. Rolex always does something solid, but I mean, of course, there's models there that you do, do not like that much. Mm-hmm. I don't like the Odd Master too, but I'm no the Hulk. Fact. The Hulk is one of them most over, what, oh, overrated. Yeah, 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 I mean, that's that your number one. Like, like, that's the same as you buying a fucking watch with a red fucking dial, and because it's red, it's 20, 20 grand. Like, I mean, <laughs> keep in mind the steel version of that would have been five grand, but whatever. <laughs> a, a different color would have been five grand, but you paid 15 grand for a color red. You damn must like the color red. <laughs> <laughs> well, red pill, right? I guess okay. Uh, they're blue, mate. Yeah. And what? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> blue pills. Yeah. They're good. Uh, get you going for at least. Uh, oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, you see? Listen. See, Alice, for I'm those that are older, wondering. You know? Yeah. Hey, hey, man, you got to do what you got to do, bro. Blue <laughs> chew. <laughs> <blue too. laughs> but no, it's very hard, really, because you know what? So many watch brands are doing incredible things, but. Okay. They, 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 the problem with the watch game is they don't they don't understand their the, their customer base. They don't understand their their that that younger people wanted to buy watches nowadays. They just don't get it. Let me ask you this: Where the hell can someone get a watch at retail price, man? You go in a Rolex store. So L- literally, like I've been in several yeah. Rolex stores. They have nothing no right nothing so let me explain you how this works right all right break it, it down for the people uh, why the hell they can't find a rolex the black market break it down for the people right so the watches are available the watches are there right but you know when you walk into an authorized dealer right there's like oh it's not available whatever but i'll uh, register your interest right give me your details that registering your interest is the only thing they're doing is doing a background check to see who you are as a customer if the brand in this case rolex thinks you are fitted for their brand they will call you back in the next week a couple of days and tell you that the submariner is available really that's it it's proper profiling and i have seen discrimination and racism and everything in this industry at levels that would be absolutely destroying every watch brand and i would be sued left right and center now luckily i'm not very scared but this is actually happening you're being profiled to see if you fit the brand and if they want to they want to sell your watch that's what's happening wow that so everyone that goes into an AD, have you, oh, let me register your interest. Have you left, left details in an AD? Have you left details in an AD? You know what? Did I do that? No, and I'll tell you why. I, I was going to do it because I really but wanted... But did they ask, ask if you were interested yeah, in yeah, and Yeah, and did I... Did they ask for your details? They did, but I didn't, I, I didn't give it because I was like, this is, it's fine. I'll just call you guys back. But exactly. I did not know. I was a rookie. I didn't realize that the game is you got to develop a relationship with the AD. I didn't know this. So, and then they're going to figure out... Like an okay. idiot. It's fine. Like it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't want to part my hard-earned money with a with a company that that does that anyway. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to part my hard-earned money with a company that first is going to check if I'm good enough to spend my hard-earned money? Go fuck yourself. I don't need to be grateful to spend my hard-earned money. I don't want to be profiled. I don't want to be looked at in a certain way. I want to buy a watch because I want to celebrate something or I want to, I want to, I just love something so dearly and I've worked very hard for that to get the money together and I just want to buy that. And if I can't buy it because you don't want to sell it to me, I don't want your product anyway. Go fuck yourself. What would you say to detractors that are saying, well, you're wearing a Rolex now? What would you say to them? 
yeah, I pay over the odds. I don't, I don't care if I want okay. something. I, buy, I, I yeah. get it. So you, you have, you have an issue with not the the watch necessarily, but like no. the profiling from the people oh, to get no. it. All fries dealers, it, mate, the it, biggest scumbags I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, they're, they're like literally racism, discrimination. The way they profile everything. First of all, it was always a waiting list, and then people were for sale. Backhanders were done. If like I'm a watch dealer and I sell a lot of watches, right? Uh-huh. I have authorized dealers coming at my, not at my door, but this was in the past. I've said this before, actually, in another podcast. Um, I actually got a letter for this, but I'll say it again. I'll get another letter. Um, I offer us either that want to say, just a sales guy, um, if you, I'll give you this day tone, if you give me a percentage of your, uh, of your sales. Wow. That's hard. Like, like. Which day tone was it? White Dow. The, oh, the white dot. Yeah. The classic? No, white Dow, just ceramic Daytona, bro. Oh, wow. You know what we said? What? Steven said, yes, let's do it. I said, fuck off. We're not doing that. No chance. I don't want to pay off anyone. I'll buy, I'll buy it off fucking trade. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. We'll make less money, but it's not about that. This industry, unfortunately, not just this industry, any industry that's, which is money driven, there's always some dodgy shit going on, but I don't want to go to a shop and feel grateful or have to feel grateful that they choose me as a customer. Mm-hmm. No, I choose them as the watch that I like, the brand that I like to wear. Yeah. That's what it should be. That's crazy. I did not know that, like, because uh, I, I always thought you build a relationship with them. They get to like you. You know, you should pop yeah, in. That That's what they is- tell you, like, pop in every two weeks and say what's up. Like, there's whole strategies on this. And I was like, dude, I don't got time to go to the Rolex store and no, exactly. every t- once people, a week. And so that comes the thing. People that actually have a job and work hard and can afford these watches don't have the time to do that. Yeah. Like, it's just like, dude, what the hell? So I was like, man, fuck it. I'll just have to get on the black market. And it's funny because, it, like, ADs hate the black market, but at the same time, they're the ones that fuel the black market and the whole watch resale we fuel the ADs because now all of a sudden a Rolex introduced uh, authorized pre-owned. Where the fuck do you think these pre-owned watches come from? Uh. They're not coming from their customers because the watches have to be three years old, three years or older. They can't be younger than three years. So where the fuck do you think Rolex authorized dealers get their pre-owned stock from? Mm. They're gray market dealers. All they've done mm. is legitimizing the gray market and raising the prices for the gray market, which Rolex and authorized dealers, I'm very grateful for. Thank you very much. But can you tell the audience real quick what's a gray market dealer? Gray market dealer is an unauthorized Rolex dealer. So they're like a second second hand car, de- car dealer. Like they're not authorized by the brand to sell their brand. Mm-hmm. But that means because there's high demand for a certain object, it also means that the prices are higher, right? Yeah. Because you can't get it at a shop. You can't get it at, at, at authorized channels. And that's how sneakers, sneakers is the same. Yeah. I have some mad fucking sneakers of, of nearly every Travis Scott, a few sneakers here with me, mm-hmm. and all sorts of things. And yeah, fuck it. I can't buy it online. Yeah. I didn't want to buy the Tiffany. Tiffany can go fuck themselves. <laughs> you yeah. into sneakers, no? Well, uh, I used to be big into Jordans back in the day, right. um, but yeah, it, 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 the whole Jordan game is very similar to watches. I would say the watches obviously is better because it really holds yeah, it's value only, for and real. And it's, it's easier to sell. Yeah, as far as I know. Um, but it's very similar, like as far as like the way it go- works. And yeah, I mean, it, I mean, what what are your th- okay? So ads are scumbags, which I've heard you know plenty no, of times. Some of the ads are nice, and there's some very passionate people there. And of course, but like there's a few that ruin it for everybody. Let, let's put it this way: the authorized dealers in America are completely different than the UK. In the UK, they're scumbags. Ah. Very, very. In the UK, they're definitely the one group. It's the biggest group. It's I, I'll not name the name, but I'll just make a hint, and you need to Google it and figure it out. I think I'm protected, protected when I say that, or allegedly. So listen, I'm known for the guy that doesn't that always speaks the truth and yeah. doesn't fuck about, right? Yep. And um, allegedly, this group is the first ever authorized Rolex dealer, the biggest Rolex, whatever, right? They have a group in America as well. But their UK division is so full. And keep in mind, I know one of their main fucking leaders works for my company now. Oh, wow. Like, I mean, in the past, I, I know literally every, nearly every shop manager and whatever. It is one big fucking it, friend, politics and friends and whatever. It's one big shit show. Right? Yeah. I walked into that same company in the US and I've never felt as welcome in my life at any authorized dealer. Wow. 
and genuine so the fashion, the fashion I've seen, and definitely in New York. So this group has a shop in New York. Big shout out to you, Kelly. Um, honestly, passion, love. It's such a complete different culture in America. It's insane. Mm. And this shows that it's not just the authorized dealer. It's not all the authorized dealers. I know a lot of authorized dealers in America are miles above them in the UK. It's In the UK, it's just more prone for dodgy characters trying to make backhanders and doing all sorts of dodgy shit and profiling may i add mm. racist race show profiling that's a bombshell man i did not know that they that are good. taking your information to literally profile you i thought it was just like all right who's on the wait list first who spent the most money who do we know the best but you're saying like it's actually they look you up and down and want to yeah. see if you're someone that even wears a brand because I've, I've been told that like if you go in and you don't even have a rolex on they don't they're not going to even take you seriously oh, you don't even have one on it's bollocks bollocks, yeah, absolute bollocks yeah they literally profile you and it's even worse with protect philippe mm. protect philippe is even worse really it's one what of the they... reasons why i don't want to wear protect philippe anymore what, what the same thing just on a higher level yeah damn it's bizarre isn't it yeah i mean it's it's crazy i i mean you're dropping bombshells right now i didn't know any of this there you go. So if someone wants to get a piece, I mean, is the gray market the only way that people can no, get a piece nowadays? Not. You can suck, you can suck some, uh, suck some dick in an ID if you want. Like, I mean, it's not my fucking problem. Like, without doing any, uh, you know, gay for watch, whatever. It could be a girl. You can suck some vagina. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, bro. So basically, all you guys, the gray market guys. Okay, fair enough. You, you're not getting, you're not getting Rolex. I've been to several Rolex stores, dude. And you know, it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned the UK because I've been to a bunch of them in the UK, and they're all empty. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, no, let me tell you one thing. It does make sense to go to an AD in London. sometimes, right? Okay. Not the UK. UK is shit show. Right? Yeah. But in America, definitely. And they will get your details. And if you are fit enough for them, yeah, they will call you back in a couple of days and you will get a Submariner. You will. A Submariner, okay. Or AOP. Or if you're very lucky, a precious metal Daytona. Right? They will. 100%. But you're not getting no Arab dial, pre platinum presidential. You're not getting none of that, probably. Um, you Meteor, could, you could Pepsi. Try. If you're if you're if you're local to the Emirates, you could try, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you could, and I think if you have a buying history, it could be uh, very very good. But you need to build up that buying history. But what I'm what I'm what I just what I don't like is, first of all, luxury means you need to make an effort. Yeah. It doesn't come easy, which I I do like. But if you go to an AD, I don't feel like I need to make an effort. I feel like the roles are reversed. Yeah, yeah. I'm a customer, bro. Yeah. You're treating me like you're my, that, 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 like you're treating me wrong. Yeah. You're treating me the complete other way. And I don't want to live like that. Yeah. And I think, um, I actually think because Rolex, this is not Rolex, right? It's the authorized dealer. Yeah, it's that, 80s that's, that's specifically. That's problem, right? Yeah. And the way to treat this and then they, you need to buy jewelry first and yeah. whatever, mate. Like, fuck off. Just fuck off. This actually will have a long lasting effect uh, of the Rolex brand in the future. I actually do think that in 10 years, whenever the Rolex production is up to scratch and in 10 years or less, probably eight, seven to eight years, they've built the new facilities and, and, and the Rolex production is up to scratch. I do think that this will have a mad negative effect on their uh, on their on their current uh, on their brand on their awareness. I, I don't think Rolex will be in any way, shape, or form powerful anymore. Then, yeah. damn. Well, get your APs now, guys. And this uh, is coming no, from no, some... listen. It is. It is. Because, Holy. Like, and this is coming from a guy that loves Rolex. Oh, I'm obsessed with Rolex, bro. I'm just yeah, yeah, heartbroken yeah. to see this shit. Yeah, like, but you're keeping it. One thing I will say, Nico, is you're brutally honest and transparent. I mean, guys, he told me to buy this AP, right? He's not the one selling it to me. Someone else is. Right. And he's telling me, no, get it. Like, get it. It's a good price. You know, absolutely yeah, do you it. Need to, you, you left some meat on the bone for the dealer that sells it to you. Yeah. I sell this shit. Because Nico could get it for me cheaper. And he was like, no, deal with your guy. Like, it, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's true. It's very important to do relationships or build relationships in this game. Um, because if something else comes along that you want, you got that trust, et cetera, and they'll take care of you. And then regardless, I'm getting it pretty much at oh, you're, getting, at, you're getting a good price yeah i'm getting a very good price and it's pretty much gonna go up in value Let's put so it this way i want you, I, I would love you as a customer when he fucks it up 
<laughs> that's it. Yeah. So because then all of a sudden, I, I don't want to take any. I don't do that shit. Right. Everyone needs. Yeah. To you're very it. transparent. And honest. Everyone. You told me right away. Buy it. You don't got to buy it through me. Go through your guy. All right, I get a few cheaper, but go through your guy. All right. He literally sold that right before the show, guys. So this is no cap. And that's how I know what you're saying is true, because like you're you love Rolex. And even you're saying like, eh, this is this. this. I'm, I'm the biggest Rolex fanboy in the world. That was that that. Rolex is the reason why I got obsessed with watching in the first place. Rolex is everything to me, right? Everything, right? And seeing seeing Rolex treating me, not just me, but treating people the way they are doing. It's not Rolex, it's authorized dealers, but the disrespect that Rolex has, it's it's just painful, man. It's painful. It's like it's like never meet your hero type of thing, you know? Mm, and uh damn. Yeah, I'm I'm sad because Hans Wilsdorf, the founder of Rolex, um, had a different vision for the company. Damn. Is he still alive? No, he's dead. He okay. founded the company in 1905, man. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> my bad. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, shit. So again, I'm, I'm a student, guys. I'm learning, all right? I'm learning. Uh, so AP is the new frontier? I think AP will do great things, but they can't wrap up, ramp up production. So yeah. Just, I mean, as far as like holding value. Yeah, 100%, yeah, 100%. fair enough. Not even a joke. It's not, it doesn't even come close anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Batman on Jubilee or always or uh, Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah. Yeah. Please settle the debate. Is it Jubilee or an oyster bracelet? Make it a Batman or a Batgirl. So I've heard people say if it's on a Jubilee, so it's a Batgirl. If it's on the oyster bracelet, you're 32 years Batman, old, right? 33. 33 years old. Why the fuck do we give watches nicknames, bro? <laughs> like, what we the got, fuck? You got to call it the Pepsi. The... Yeah, but like, I mean, I, I'm not calling my co my car Bobby, right? I mean, what the fuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Some people call it the Bruce Wayne and the Batman. I mean, it, there's been debates on this. Do you think, it, is is the Jubilee band, make it a... Uh... People use bad girl. I think it's fucking horrendous. I find these nicknames very cringe. So better on the Jubilee. I love, so for me, the Batman, right? I'm just, I'm playing your game, right? I'll do it. What's the reference number for the editor? The, the old gen or the new gen? God damn, you're good. 116710BLNR. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. The new one is 126710BLNR. The Jubilee is identical. What differentiates the new one and the old one? The Jubilee? No, it's a power reserve. So oh, which different. one's better for that? What should people, the people the get? the shape of the case from 40 to 41 mil. What should the people get? I think it depends what their budget is, but I would go for new. Like, I love the sleek. I love the 41. The newer case. one is actually better in this case? I like the newer one, right? After what year? After 2021. Okay. So the new generation, 70 hour powers are 41 millimeter case. And the Batman should always be on the bracelet. On the, or bra and the, sorry, the Batman, so the black and blue should always be on the oyster bracelet. Okay. But the Pepsi should always be on the Jubilee. Oh. Uh -huh. You shouldn't. Okay, so up. Batman should be on Oyster, not yeah, Jubilee. I wouldn't buy that. No, it should always be. People on the love the Jubilee on the Batman. Yeah, though. but I love the Jubilee on the Pepsi. It is, this is a matter of taste. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like I don't like the bat, the bat girl or whatever you call it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, if you don't. I, I, I don't, I should be on the that that is the blue and black collar is robust. It's manly. It's masculine. And then you put a feminine bracelet like fucking. <laughs> Jubilee on, and I love the Jubilee bracelet. Don't get me wrong; I have it on my sky dweller as well. Yeah, I love it, but that that is a more elegant, more. And for the audience, for those that are probably wondering, like, uh, you show them. I guess you can show them the difference with with my oyster right here versus. So this is an oyster bracelet, and this is the polished. This is the. Uh, Actually, we got all three bracelets right there. So you got the presidential right there, or right. Uh, None of the brick bracelet though, but whatever. Um, Jubilee presidential, right? So all three. Do you see this? Is this right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. They can see all three. Yep. So presidential bracelet was only made in precious metal. Sorry. Let me do this camera. Let me do the mic here. So this bracelet, presidential bracelet, was only made in precious metal, meaning it was only made in platinum. It was only made in gold, yellow, and white, uh, and rose. Only precious metal, never steel. However, in 1974. There's one data made in steel as a prototype with a presidential bracelet, but it was never commercially sold. This was a prototype again, right? So this bracelet was called the presidential bracelet, only made in precious metal. This is one of the two types of oyster bracelets. Mm -hmm. Did I say oyster to this? No, uh, I don't think you did. No, I did, did say it right. Presidential. Presidential. It's the yeah. only bracelet that's ever only made in precious metal. That's yeah. the presidential. So there's several types of oyster bracelets. This mm -hmm. case, it's the brushed. 
the brushed finish oyster bracelet you only really see that by starting models and sports models mm -hmm. so some manner is a sports model in this case because it's used for diving that has a brushed bracelet as well mm -hmm. right now there's a trick here because the daytona actually has the polished center links not the brushed right That's uh. the daytona but the older generation daytona we're talking about when it was the daytona shape as we now know which was introduced in 1988 had the brushed bracelet Wow. People didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I not just, the not I the no idea. not the polished one. But this is the oyster bracelet. This is the Jubilee bracelet. And the Jubilee bracelet was introduced in 1945 to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Rolex. Right. Mm. That's why it's called Jubilee. Uh, it's to celebrate the 40th anniversary. And that was also in the introduction of the Rolex Datejust, the first ever automatic watch with an automatic switching date. Bam. All right. History lesson right there. I hope it wasn't too boring. No, but man. That is, that is my life. No, that's 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 awesome. I mean, hey, th this is the one-stop shop for for watches uh, podcast right now. Uh, so, Batman, Oyster, in your opinion, Pepsi, Jubilee. Oh, I agree. Yeah. The, the Pepsi. If you had to pick one, Pepsi or Batman? Pepsi. Damn, you didn't even think. No. Why? Fucking love it. History. History. You know why it's why it's Pepsi? You know, if you have any idea where that watch comes from? Because of the blue, if I'm not mistaken, is the Pepsi blue that was that that got nothing to do with Pepsi. Oh, okay. History time again. Let's there do it. Go. 1950, that was watch was produced in the college for Pan Am. Pan Am, the American airliner. Pan Am American Airlines. Okay. This watch wasn't commercially sold. It was a watch that was produced for the pilots because Rolex or Pan Am has asked Rolex to produce a watch that would help their uh, pilots to see their home and away time. First, uh, first uh, produced in 1950. 1951, the watches were delivered to the pilots. 1953, Rolex made the decision to bring this watch out commercially and sell it. In the colors, however, of Pan American. Ah, then why did they call the Pepsi? Because the blue and red combo? Who the fuck knows about Pan America? Who knows about Fair Pan enough. Like, no one. Nobody. It's non-existing. Yeah. They're gone. So let's just name it after a shitty soda brand. No, but it's like Pepsi, red. Coca-Cola is better. We call it Pepsi. We yeah, but Coco's, Coco's, Coco's better. Coco's better. Like yeah, Pepsi better. is cunts. Yeah, facts. Pepsi fucking points. Hey. Where's, where's the fucking fight? And Dr. Pepper is even trash. Even worse. Oh. Like, if you, people that drink did, Dr. Pepper. Did you see that? Yeah, Dr. Stupid. Pepper is different level. Like, yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. About, it's a bit. But you know what? Yeah. Everyone has a taste. But let me. Did you see that fucking documentary about Pepsi points? No. No? About the fighter jet? No. You didn't see that on Netflix? No. Honestly, bro. I try to avoid Pepsi like a plague. Any, <laughs> like genuinely. Except for it's, if it's a Rolex. Mm, yeah, but that's different. Yeah. All okay. right. So Pepsi already. Because those no, are the two I that get compared. To, when, I, when I'm in a restaurant and I have a Pepsi, I don't want it. Fair enough. It's because a trash I'm center. angry. I'm angry. <laughs> they fucked over some young kid. It's a documentary on Netflix actually about it. Question for you. Pepsi Meteorite? Yes or no? Wow. What a lot. You like it? I think it's nice too. Love it. I was going to get it, but it's white gold as well. Oh, Another disappointing situation. Dial. Such a unique dial. Is it really made for meteorite? From like yeah, a... it's going to be a meteorite in Namibia. Yeah. So there's a big stone landed like thousands of years ago in, in, in Africa, Namibia, right? Uh -huh. And until 15, 14 years ago, you were still able to harvest the stone. So you paid money, you got a piece of that stone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, recently, that stopped. So you can't harvest that stone anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's actually... Um, Gibeon meteorite, dude. I wanted that watch so bad, then I was white gold. I was like, damn, yeah, hell, that's not haram, it's very haram, a very not haram, <laughs> but fuck me, what a watch that is, yeah, bro. man. All right, top five watches all time, your favorites. Go today, five start at five. Uh, I find it difficult, I'd rather start at my favorite because I know exactly what I want. Is the Kronenfeld Chronograph? Kronenfeld is an, a really small independent watchmaker out of the Netherlands. Make okay. everything by hand. It's insane. There, Chronograph, as they call that, is how much is that bad boy? One hundred fifty-five thousand euros. Damn. So I think I got the allocation sorted. So that means I, I. Do you have that? I think I have it sorted. I need to speak with them again, and I'll speak with them in Switzerland on the 27th. Okay, so you don't have it yet, but you're so working towards it. I don't have it yet. But okay. I mean, it's... So that's number one. It's number one. Like, okay, uh, what's number two? Um, I'm asking the tough questions today. Yeah, that's tough, bro. Um, the watch that gives me the most joy 
the top favorite ever watch. I don't want to go too obvious, but I just love the 15202R. The Jumbo, 39 mil Royal Oak Jumbo. Oh, I think it's one of the most beautiful watches. Not a, not the 40? No, 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 not the 40. 39, bro. 39. Those are old ones. Yeah. No, but this is not old. This is not old. The 15202 is an older... Uh, it has the old movement that was made by Gégé Lecoult, but it's actually a relatively recent model, but it was okay. discontinued last year. So that's your number two? Yeah. Um... Fashion Overseas Rose Gold Blue Dow Perpetual. Mm. 4,500, I think. It's brutal. Oh, you said you hated Oyster Perpetuals. No, no. 45, no, it's a Fashion Constantine. What did I say? Did I say Oyster Perpetual? You were making fun of me about oysters off air. Oh, did I say Oyster Perpetual? Yeah, you said oh, oh, oysters are trash. So we'll do this different. It's yeah. like completely different because I'm actually... It's the Vacheron Constantine overseas. Ah, okay. Did I say overseas or not? I think you said oyster. Oh, no. Fuck that. Someone's going to be commenting below. So, They're both retarded, but that's uh, right. well, I'm, I'm sorry. I haven't slept, guys. All right. I haven't slept yet. I've been over uh, asleep, awake for over 24 hours. Right. He's been working all day. Exactly. It's been a long day. The Fashion Constantine overseas, uh, rose gold with a blue dial, blue perpetual okay. calendar. Unbelievable. All right. That's three. And then four and five. Uh, I'm not going to put Rolex in the top five, bro. Not anymore. That time is over. Wow, not one Rolex in your top five? No. But Tech Philippe, 5270P, 5270P. Why not the P. Tiffany one, dude? What? No, I'm just kidding. No, fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> Tiffany can suck my dick. Not we know, even, I would we say know no. it triggers Nico now. Tiffany and Hublot. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me, you get me on the moon, like. <laughs> um, 5271P with a fa factory diamond set bezel. Yep. Oh, fuck me. That's, that's sexy, like. Yeah, that's really fucking sexy. Yeah, um, two six three three one O R no B A blue dial with a blue rubber strap. It's that one, but then the blue, but then the the yellow gold version with the blue strap and a blue dial. Damn, that is insane. So A P Patek, a fashion That's actually an old Trinity. Oh no, also Chronograph. Kronenfeld, also Kronenfeld. So it's the Holy Trinity plus one independent. Bam. Now, can you tell the people a little bit about your services? Because there's a lot of people that sell fake watches out there. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell how to spot a fake unless you're an experienced, you know, collector like yourself. Please don't DM me to ask me if, if this watch is real or fake because I won't do that. Yeah. That's not my fucking yeah, we hell time no. for that. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, the, we're, the, we're the market leaders on the island of Ireland selling watches all over the world, but we're the biggest on the island of Ireland. We're the fifth biggest in the UK selling watches. Um, and of course, world domination. I want to sell watches all over the world, and mm -hmm. uh, Miami is no exception. What's the best way if someone wants to get a watch through uh, your reach company? Out to the team on Instagram, picked up that that moment, that day, depending what time zone you're in, and we sell what we, we buy, we sell, we trade, we do everything. Yeah. We service. We you want an extremely rare timepiece? We'll help you out, and uh, of course, there will be. Uh, the, the, that's what we do, mate. That's what we do. And he's not lying, guys. When I came in here, like, and I was setting up, like, literally, he was on, like, what, 10 plus phone calls? Yes. Like, it was ridiculous. Three watch deals. Yeah. Like, I literally heard him making right. deal after deal after deal. I need this help. He's trying to, he's getting me a link right now. Uh, right. Working on. Let me see if that, that actually arrived. So. Yeah, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a 1.5 link, guys, because I got, like, really skinny wrists, as y'all can see here, uh, for this AP. Yeah, I can, actually, I can actually call him. I can actually call him here. Oh, shit. I'm you want this on this? camera? Sure, Let's why not? Do this. Let's do this. Let's see. D guys, this is not scripted. This is actually a real call. It's for this AP Royal Oak here right now. I know, I know in America you're used to scripting things, like doing watch deals scripted. Yo, you well? Yes, yeah, sir. You? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Sorry, I'm, I'm do, just doing a podcast. No, no worries, man, no worries. Uh, so I'll just say I got here. I'm picking it up. I don't know what time you want me to come there. This one's January 25th, 2023. I have it with me. Uh, Olive Green or Rose? Olive Green, I haven't found it yet. This All is right. Where the price is at 184. All right. All right. I might go around and check. Yeah, check. Uh, what about that 1.5 link? Yeah, I got two, three leads. I'm waiting for them. But do you want me to wait here until I get a call? Yeah, get a call. Yeah, get a call, mate. Get a call. Wait for it. That would be good. Because then we can move immediately because he leaves at 3 a.m. in the morning. We need to get him that link sorted regardless. 
Yes, that would be amazing. Because here's the, here's the double shift. So now there's another shift that starts at 5 p.m. So 10 p.m. Fuck me. Did it work half days there or what? Yeah, my so they, <laughs> so like they take from three to five is closed and then five. Oh, no, no. Like, um, did you pick up that rose gold chocolate yet? I'm here with it. I'm all right, all right. Video, so you can send all right, amazing, amazing. This one's, the, this one's the January 25th. Yeah. January 25th, 2023 with sticker. Yeah. I got you the one with the sticker. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Amazing. Right. All right, that's fine. Um, right, I'll catch you. I'll catch you in about fifteen minutes. All right. Okay. I'll give you a call. Your address? So, what time is the client coming up? Um, I'm giving him a call now. If, when I when I get the chance to hang up. Okay. Yeah. So just send me the address and I'll come. To Legend, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Wow. Waiting for the link still, waiting for the link. But we got the chocolate doll uh, day date sort of for my client tonight. Yep. Who's coming down. They love day dates here in Dubai. They fucking love day dates. They love day dates out here. can't sell them in the UK, but for some reason, everyone wants them here. Yeah. Um, but they're not no, that's crazy. Wrong. So, dude, that's not the for, We literally, guys, we made that call for the 1.5 link like maybe an hour ago. Yeah. Like, yeah, about an hour, like right before we went live. So, yeah, was, well, right before we started filming. So, about an hour, 45 minutes ago, like right before we went on, he made that call for me. So, the fact that, and within two hours, he's already got a couple of leads. That's crazy. All right. You can only, because no, you can only get 1.5 links from AP, right? Directly. Ah, you call, it's difficult, bro. But this guy, this guy wants to prove himself. And uh, like, he, funny enough, he approached me yesterday when I was in the mall and he's like, uh, like, let me see, let me see what you, what you got if you don't give up, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, he's in the beginning of his career. I've, I've done the hard work, the running and stuff like that. Oh yeah. At this and, point, dude, you're the face, you, you know, you're just like, people trust you and you, you get them with the, what they need. And for you me, make that it is the most important, right? Yeah. So then you have people, like I started like him as well, you know, but like, I, uh, it's good, but I, this that's is impressive though. Doing some Guys, that, that was not, that was literally raw. Just called them out the blue. <laughs> like, right. Hey, What's going on? So he's got a bunch of people working from him. Do YouTube? I'm still watching it, bro. About yeah. anything else? That's what I love: making deals happen, making people happy. Yeah. And being able to make money while you're doing that. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah, man. Doing what you love, helping people out to get what they love, fe feeding your passion. That's what it's all about, man. Um. So, where can people find you, man? This was a great interview, by the way. I really enjoyed this. I I learned a bunch. I'm sure people out there learned a bunch. Um. This was a unique interview. I think this is probably only. I don't think we've. Yeah, definitely. We've interviewed uh, watch people before, but not on your level. So this was really big for I'm us. I'm the normal level, man. I'm like, bro, come on, man. He's such a humble guy. <laughs> just, he is I'm such a humble guy. Man. Well, until he talks about my OP, uh, shite. Oh, yeah. he's so hurt. This is yeah. the fifth time he talks about it. Oh. So yeah, That's man. That's the only reason we wanted to be on because I just wanted to make this point clear. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you know, you got a huge YouTube channel, 1.25 mil at the time of recording this. Uh, you got an Instagram with hundreds of thousands of followers. Um, so if people want to get a piece from you, where, how should they go about Wait, it? And then where can they find it? Reach out to prideandpinion.com or that's the or link will be below. Pride and Pinion, links below. Um, and if it's something really, really special, watch-wise, Richard Mille, I, I really do the special stuff myself. Although I love to sell Rolexes, but like, I can't do that the whole day. I'm traveling as well, and I just have a newborn child, and it's a bit crazy. But congrats! I'm, and I have, a, I have a really solid team. I stand over every single person that works for us. Um, there's it's not like America; they get paid commission. They're working for our company. They're they're proper salaried, and and you see what I mean. It's different in America. It's like one big cowboy show. If you do that fucking American shit in the UK, you get arrested. Yeah. It's crazy. You get arrested for anything out there. Ah, yeah. To be fair, uh, can you imagine. No, anyway. You get arrested well, for tweeting <laughs> in the UK, bro. <laughs> <laughs> can't have real estate. Can't tweet, man. No, exactly. UK. Exactly. Uh, but um, no. Uh, if you wanna wanna buy a watch, sell a watch, mm -hmm. want some advice, speak with the team. That's at, at prideandpinion.com. That's my company, and then my me personally, Nico Leonard Vanderhorst. Um, sorry for the weird surname, but Nico Leonard. Nico is my first name. Second name is Leonard. Van der Horst is my surname. I'm still Dutch. Bam. So, uh, guys, dude, that was a great interview. Um, I appreciate that. It was yeah, good. it was good fun to have you here. Guys, like the Did video, subscribe the to the channel. Yeah, the sushi was great. Uh, he tried to eat sushi with a fork, mate. It Come was on. a disgrace. <sighs> Come this on, dude. Honestly, bro. I was hungry, man. Chopsticks take too long. <laughs> <laughs> trying to eat sushi with a fork, you might Oh, man. He's Nico Lender, guys. Go check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Instagram, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this show. This was a very educational one, man. Um, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>